in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Alpha. Omega, you are Yahweh. Worshiping from the depth of your heart. You are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. Ask the Lord to bless you and speak to you tonight. One word from the Lord can change your life. One word from the Lord can open a door that you never dreamt will open. One word from the Lord can bring you into a new dimension of the anointing. One encounter with the Spirit of God can open up doors beyond your imagination. Cry from the depths of your heart. Be intentional about it. Je marana na na ba
there is nothing that we have outside your presence you are the secret of everything men have celebrated in this ministry we acknowledge you we declare that you are the beginning and the end we thank you you're my treasure my pride Great is the measure of your royalty. Great is the measure of your royalty. For more things done, you truly are everything. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, the glory and the litter of my head. Very simple song of worship says, But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield. Let me sing it one more time. That's our testimony in this house. For thou, oh Lord, art a shield for me. Shield the glory and the lifter up of my head. My glory and the lifter up of my head. For thou, oh Lord, art a shield. Let's sing it together. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory and the lifter of my head. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. Bless us tonight, O oh God. We will never, never forget your presence. But there is nothing we can do without you. We declare it. We are not ashamed to let the world know that you are our glory. We pride ourselves only in your presence. It is of your fullness we have received. Tonight, Lord, we ask that you speak to the needs of your people challenge us there are people here trusting you for all kinds of encounters there are people here trusting you for healings for miracles for breakthroughs others trusting that you refire their lives and take them to new dimensions of the anointing i ask tonight that you minister to everyone in the name of jesus god bless you please greet one another and be seated hallelujah Let's see how fast we can go tonight so that we can finish early. Pray for me. We're really working on our timing. We want to see how God will grant us grace so that I'll finish fast. Um, by God's grace, we'll make sure that we 
hasten every activity before my coming up so that we can have time for the word. Sorry, this is not a regular ministry. And so you find out that there's no room for drama and all of these kinds of things. Praise the Lord. And, and all the things we believe that days will come when we'll have time for that. Hallelujah. Announcements and all of these kinds of things. Praise the Lord. Tonight your life will change in a dramatic way. In the name of Jesus Christ. What I'm about to teach you will transform your life. Honestly, I'm determined this year to make sure by the grace of God that we all experience the reality of the rain. Let it not just be a song that we keep singing again and again and again. Hallelujah. We're trusting that God will really, really grant us grace. And so all the teachings that will be coming, please, I want you to pay attention, especially today's teaching. Hallelujah. I was talking to the Lord a few days ago about us, the house, and um, I really appreciated him for what he's doing. But let me start on this note. I'm a bit concerned um, at our pace of both spiritual progress and otherwise. Hallelujah. I am very, very humbled. I... As we travel around ministering the word of God, I am amazed, not, not necessarily surprised, but amazed at the impact and the transformation that this ministry and the teaching is bringing in the lives of people. We, we receive testimonies, thousands and thousands of testimonies um, from lives but then every one of them come fresh they come very fresh and really impactful um, when we begin to share maybe one day we'll have the opportunity to share some of these testimonies and you won't believe the encounters the breakthroughs there are whole churches that play koinonia messages and just sit down under that anointing and get blessed and there are all kinds of miracles that have happened to people. Liftings, encounters, you know. I think one of the greatest testimonies is the encounter that people have through the messages. Angelic encounters, heavenly encounters. They step into levels of the anointing. And some of them have never been here. Never been here. There are people, there are ministries, there are pastors that travel kilometers to come. And so I'm a bit concerned that we who are here, that God has granted us the privilege to directly sit down under this very heavy unction. I am a bit disturbed as to why the pace of our growth is a bit slow. Um, and I, I began to ask God, because I care about us. I don't just care about myself. Left for me, I am, I am bent on walking with God. And receiving testimonies from that relationship. But every true leader prides himself in the joy of the people. Hallelujah. If only the leaders succeed, we're the only ones getting blessed and prosperous and lifted and anointed, you know. And God is expanding and increasing our influence. Many leaders will rejoice at that. But my joy is to see that as we rise... Everyone who sits under this anointing becomes a first-hand epistle of the vision. Hallelujah. So I'm a bit concerned. Honestly, I am. Um, not necessarily worried, but I began to ask the Lord because I know that the problem is not with the quality of the word. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we may not be the best, but I think we have done well in bringing the word of God in due season. So, I, I really began to talk to the Lord about it. I expect 10 times the results that we see in our lives. There are people who are afar off. Never seen me, not even my picture. Some of them have had just one message, just one encounter. Just one. There are people who have just one koinonia message. Just one. Koinonia teachings are so powerful, it doesn't matter which of them you get you produce the same thing. Even if it's on marriage and what you need is healing, 
It doesn't matter. Just get that atmosphere. Hallelujah. And so I, I really, I want us to take, we are not, we are not playing games. Praise the Lord. This is a real ministry. We are very disciplined and serious with the assignment that God has given us. There is a revolution going on in this nation. And I can tell you with all humility that we are contributing significantly to the spiritual renaissance that God is doing. Especially in the lives of the generations that are coming. I am humbled by those who have access to these teachings. I have met kings, I have met politicians, I have met nobles, I have met people who my level of life would never have afforded me to meet, all on account of the grace of God and what he is doing. Praise the Lord. And I expect that um, those of us who are sitting down, please volume, directly under this anointing, we should be able to walk first hand many of us have access to me there's counseling sessions even after the meeting we can even if it's a handshake a hug whatever it is you sit down directly under the worship under the prayer and all of that and, and so it is either one of two things number one either you are not really interested in pursuing this reality of the divine life to be at work in you hallelujah either there is a direct negligence or there is creeping in subtly the danger of familiarity hallelujah familiarity is a disastrous thing it has a way of destroying you hallelujah praise the lord one time reverend dr umar Upai shared a touching testimony many years ago i heard him preach and he said that um, his brother and the brother's friend needed a miracle. And it was, it was a financial miracle. They really needed a miracle from God. And the brother went to him and said, um, Can you give me some money? And he said, You're my brother. I can't deny it. And he gave him some money. But the friend came and said, Man of God, I really need a miracle. And he prophesied and spoke to the person and said your bands will never run dry two people same need different results hallelujah there is if your life does not change under this unction i guarantee you something is wrong with your approach god is in this place hallelujah i was humbled by the testimony of our dear sister and um, it doesn't take too much to see the hand of god it just takes you being disciplined and follow instructions the problem with many of us is there is this spiritual stubbornness you know what we call i too know mentality physically see it's a it's a foolish thing when you don't have results in your life and you keep arguing with the words that come hallelujah have you seen students like that in class their cgpa is low they are not doing well yet they argue with the lecturer again and again and then those who are very serious, those who are exceptional, they sit down diligently. There is an attitude. Look, let me tell you. The ball is in your court. You have to choose. You see people changing. There are people who are changing. There are testimonies that are coming. You are the only one who is left. You can choose to argue it and watch sick people get healed and watch God change the story of people. Look at people oh my god look let me tell you if i begin to share with you some of these testimonies hallelujah very humbling testimonies of the hand of god hallelujah we are too small to doubt the might of god do you know how far god can take you brothers and sisters? forget about your age look if you want to receive from God, I'm speaking to especially many of us who are students, you must remove this student mentality and bury it and, and, and know that you are only a student for a few moments. Many of us, this dependency mentality has crippled us. You have graduated for five years now, but you still believe. Koinonia is not a fellowship. 
Koinonia is an apostolic and a prophetic move of God. It's not some kind of campus thing for just young people. Hallelujah. Please be determined that there must be an evidence in your life. Hallelujah. There must be an evidence in your life, brothers and sisters. And this is, this is my goal. I cry before God every time I pray for us. And I say, Lord, please let your people, even if it means not blessing me, no problem. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy, that's what must happen to you. My status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. One more time, prophesy to yourself. My status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way. On my way. On my way to better days. Prophesy, you're on your way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. To better day. To better day. To better day. Sing, status is changing. Come on. Status is changing. The word of God is doing so something to you. Decline. We're on our way. I'm on my way. To better day. There is a better tomorrow, I tell you. Forget about today. My status is changing. There's no more decline. We're on our way to better days. We're on our way. We're on our way. On our way. That's the destiny of this ministry. To better days, we're on our way. We're on our way. On our way. We're on our way. On our way. We're on our way. To better days. We're on our way. We're on our way. On our way. You can choose to take the flight or not. But I tell you, God is going somewhere with us. To better days. Prophesy to yourself. It's part of the meeting. We're on our way. That His glory will I'm change something way. in your life. I'm on my way. To better days. To better days. To better days. To better days. We're on our way. On our way. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. Hear me. It doesn't take time. It just takes having access to the keys. It doesn't take a lot of stories and discussion. There is what you can hold on to. When you catch it, you have caught it. It will change your life. Men will talk. They will only talk for nonsense. You will only be moving like a star that cannot be stopped. But the question is, are you willing? It's not enough to just listen. There is no situation you are in that is the worst in the earth. There are people in a worse situation. But this word has taken them out of it and honored them. It may look like there is a delay. But you must tell yourself the glory of God is changing me. This is already a word for somebody tonight. You may not look like it. Brothers and sisters, forget about it. Your status is changing there's no more decline. You're on your way to better days. Let them laugh at you today. Your status is changing. Your status is changing. There's no more decline. There's no more decline. You're on your way. You're on your way to better days. 
prophesy to yourself my status is changing spiritually financially in every respect on my way on my way Now pray and say, Lord, give me focus. Help me to settle with the world. Whatever distracts me. Whatever distracts me, whatever is robbing my life, I'm ready to be a student. I'm ready to submit myself. Go ahead and pray. I'm ready to lay down my pride to get what works. I'm ready to submit myself. I'm ready to lay down my pride. I repent from arguing with the word. Give me the keys, so oh God. Let my hands handle them. Pray. I lay down my pride. I lay down my pride. I submit to the word of God. I lay down every argument. Every vain talk. I submit to the word. I want to see results in my life. There is something I do not know. Show me, oh God. There is something that connects me to the next level. You are changing the life of others. Don't forget about me. I am willing. You are changing the life of others. I am willing. You are changing the story of others. I am willing. I take my eyes away from my failures. I take my eyes away from limitations. I take my eyes away from criticisms. I am not stiff-necked. I am not stubborn. I am malleable to your word. Yes, Lord, I submit to your word. It has changed many. It has produced champions and generals. Like you to see your future and prophesy. I'm on my way. Oh, they will hear my voice. On my way. They will see his glory upon my life. I'm on my way. To better days. To better days. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We submit to your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please pick up your Bible. First John chapter 5 verse 4. God bless you. Let's get straight to the word. There is a lot to talk about. First John 5 verse 4. Please pay attention. If you are here, sit down, sit down, sit down. God bless you. Please look up everyone before we read that scripture. I expect everyone coming for Koinonia to at least buy a book like this. Praise the Lord. All these pieces of papers we have that we throw powerful revelations on it. Get something like this. Please, pay attention. Just be a student for a while and let the world honor you. Forget about pride, please. I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Young and old. 
rich or poor, whatever you, when you come to the presence of God, just follow instructions. Your next dimension is in the instruction you follow. Hallelujah. Don't be too, don't do big manism before God. For the kingdom is for children. Get a notebook. Get a good biro. Don't come around if, if, if you have devices or phones that you can, you can, you know, record and write very well. Do so. Don't just sit down and be careless. When you are inviting others, let them know that they are not just coming for fellowship. Hallelujah. If you love them enough, buy it and give them. Buy it. There are lots of jotters that we get from wedding. Free. Huh? Instead of writing your problems on it and writing all the people that hurt you, why don't you bring it, sow it as a seed to somebody? Get this. This is my own notebook. There are many others like this. It shows that you respect what God is teaching you. In the book of Revelation, when John saw everything, he told him, write. He didn't say, think about it. He didn't say, crime it. He said, write, for these words are faithful and true. When prophet Elisha was passing and the Shunammite woman perceived that this was a holy man of God, when they decorated his room, they kept a table for him there so that he would write. The ancient wrote, you must write. Hallelujah. Please, when you come, that's why we have time to say hug one another. When we say hug, hug. When we say sit down and listen, no loitering around, walking around, pinching this is is demonic it's not just bad it's demonic i'm telling you it's, it's the spirit of distraction your mind cannot do too many things at once hallelujah when the word is coming that's when you remember that oh i i need to do this i need to do that somebody is pinging you, you are pinging the person it's demonic pay attention hallelujah please inside and outside even if you don't have a seat pay attention somebody is smiling and telling you have you seen their uniform tell the person please don't distract me i'm tired of my situation and my life must change don't distract me if you say it once you won't repeat it again but by the time you start entertaining nonsense in the middle of something powerful that should liberate you the person will say can you imagine was it a uh, that we've won, how much did you even say it? This is not the place to discuss all this for God's sake. Of course, we appreciate ourselves. But if you don't place value for the word, it will never change you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. First John chapter 5. You will thank me tomorrow. You may not like me today. But I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Many are already thanking me. And those who didn't listen are now listening in a painful way. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words in First John 5, verse 4. Everyone read is projected. One, two, read. And this is the victory that overcomes. What is it? Even replace our with my. Are you ready? Read it one more time. Even my faith. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 tells us that the just shall live by faith Hebrews 10 verse 38 media you have to really help us today let's see how we can rush I want us to finish on time Hebrews 10 38 it says the just shall live by faith in fact frankly speaking four times in scripture it is recorded that the just shall live by faith but I'll just speak to Hebrews 10 verse 38 Hallelujah. It says, now the just shall live by what? Faith. faith. But if any man draw back, draw back in what? In living by faith. 
it says my soul shall have no pleasure in him the just shall live let me interpret it for you the quality of your life here on earth is dependent on your understanding of what faith is and how it works and this is what i'm going to be teaching you tonight what faith is and how it works the operation the dynamics that's what i would have taught last week but i was away and and the holy spirit told me no you must teach this my people need to hear it because they need to understand not just what faith is but how it works true bible faith that will produce results for you habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 4 it personalizes it in a very powerful way i love the prophet he said the just shall live by his faith not your neighbor's faith habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 he says behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him but the just shall live by what you will prosper by your understanding of faith you will step into the anointing and the glory of god the quality the measure of the glory and the grace of god you will see in your life is dependent on faith there are there are free seats here please let it be a tradition from now that every time we begin the service if there are people standing some people should sit on their seats there is a vacant seat here there is another one that i see i don't know why there should be those seats there are people standing outside please ushers you should know that let's let's occupy all the seats please hallelujah the just shall live by his faith everyone say the quality of my life is dependent on my understanding of what faith is and how it works one more time say the quality of my life is dependent on my understanding of what faith is and how it works praise the lord the subject of faith is very important for the christian experience um there have been many teachings on faith many many teachings in fact it's been the core teaching in many christian circles but there are a lot of misunderstandings about the true operation of faith and i trust that god will help us to be able to balance it i want to go really straight to the point and that very very fast hallelujah it's not that our regular or popular teachings on faith are wrong but many teachings about faith please look up many teachings about faith are not complete faith is an equation faith is a formula are you following me now and the components must be complete for it to work here and there different men of god preachers great men and women of god have caught certain dimensions of what faith is and how it works but to be able to give it a very balanced scope such that it works for those who practice it is where the problem has been hallelujah let's look at a few um a few incomplete revelations of faith that have come to the body of christ number one or some corrections on the imbalances number one it has been popularly taught that faith is believing no that's not it at all faith is not just believing that's the point i want you to get Be to believe is very important is part of the equation of faith but it's not all there is to faith you see that for somebody straight up this is your deliverance because you have been taught that faith is just believing if you believe that's all no sir i can tell you this categorically that's not the whole equation belief talks of conviction belief talks of persuasion when you believe a thing it means that you are convicted it means that you are persuaded but it does not mean it will produce for you please let's understand that belief is part of the process of manifesting faith 
but not all of it. It is part of it, but it is not all of it. Please get this revelation. Oh, I believe God, I believe God, I believe God. Wonderful. That's only a step. That's not everything. Many of us, innocent believers, have stopped there. Believing God is not enough. Belief talks of your conviction. It is part of the overall equation, but it is not all of it. Number two, faith is not just confession. Mm. Body of Christ. Faith is not just confession. I'm dictating it so that you will write. Confession is part of the process of manifesting faith but not all of it. Please, you must get this. Confession. In the equation of faith, there is a point where confession comes in, but that is not all there is to Bible faith. See that? Many of us have been taught by well-meaning people through the years in our different Christian circles across this nation and for those listening outside of this nation and all of that, we've been taught that all there is to faith is just speak. When you speak it, you have it. No, sir. I tell you the truth from God's word and from this Bible. No, sir. It doesn't happen that way. Are you getting blessed? Hmm. So, faith is not just confession. You must realize this. If confession were all that there was to manifest in faith, I guarantee you there are people who would have been living like angels in the earth today. Because there are people who speak. I'm not against confession. There is a place. Remember in our teaching spiritual laws. There is a place. Confession activates. There is a law of speech and sound. But that's not the only law. So it is true that confession is part of the process of manifesting faith. But not all of it. So believing is not all of it. It's only part of it. Confession is not all of it. It's only part of it. Number three, faith is not just sowing seeds. Faith is not just sowing seeds. Many in the body of Christ have been taught that faith is equal to seeds So No, sir. Sowing of seeds is also part of the equation. It's activating the law of seed time and harvest, but that is not all there is. You see the imperfections. So when I camp around believing, on one side we have those who believe. Just believe. And if you really believe, it happens. That's not exactly true. Hallelujah. Or confess. And if you confess, that's all. No, that's not exactly true. Or sow seeds. The moment you are trusting God for a house, you sow a seed for that house and go and rest and it happens. No, sir. No, sir. There is an equation. God is not a fraud star. Are you getting my point? That, those kinds of attitudes make God look like a 419er. Right? And this is the reason why many people write against men of God in newspapers. They call us all kinds of things. They call us money mongers. They call us uh, metaphysical people. They call us talkatives because the incomplete teaching. See, let me tell you something, especially for those of us who are men of God here or will be called into ministry. Realize that the church is an institution, both a spiritual institution and a social institution. We influence culture, we shape people. The mindset in Nigeria has largely been altered through the church for good now. Are you getting me? Nigeria is said to be the most religious country in the whole world. And this is because of the presence and the influence of the church. There is a place that the church is playing in nation building. And, and that, that puts a lot of pressure on the man of God. Because what that means is when you mislead people, it will create a ripple effect. Right? There are some of you, as you come and sit down under this anointing, as you hear the things I preach, you take them, some of you verbatim, back to your fellowships, your members because you believe you want them to receive the same result. And that means I must be careful. If I teach you error, it becomes harder to correct it when it has left me. Are you seeing how error grows? 
Because when you go now and you are communicating to your churches or your groups or your fellowships, it may not be exactly as I said it. It will be based on what you understand. Right? By what I said. And so, the, the error keeps multiplying as it goes down the line. That's why we pray in the spirit for accuracy of utterance. So that we can communicate only that which is consistent with the mind of God. Are you blessed? So faith is not just believing. Never forget this. Number two, faith is not just confession. The word confess comes from the Hebrew word homologio. It means repeat as you have heard. So there is a place for that. The law of sound. The creative power of spoken words. But that's not all there is. Now I understand that there are times that we men of God take this aspect fragment by fragment. And, and I understand that. That's not what I'm talking about. There are people who have taken this in koinonia. We have examined all of these aspects in details one by one. And that is just for understanding. But when it comes to manifesting faith, you must be able to piece up all the fragments together. Are you getting my point now? To complete the equation. Otherwise, what you are doing is not Bible faith. Say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Faith is not just about sowing seeds. Otherwise, what difference do we have with those who just give charity around? There are unbelievers who sow cars, sow houses. Is that true? Faith is a law. Never forget this. Faith is a law, meaning it works anywhere it is accurately practiced. When it is released anywhere. A law is not something that is territorial necessarily. It's a principle that works anywhere it is diligently practiced. Salt is salt in Nigeria. Salt is salt in Bangladesh. Salt is salt in Israel. Salt is salt in Ukraine. Salt is salt in the Bahamas. Hallelujah. A gun is a gun in Nigeria. Right? A gun is a gun in Israel. What a gun can do in Nigeria, it can do in UK. That's how faith is. It's a law. So write very quickly the principles of manifesting the faith that works. The principle of manifesting the faith that works. I'm being very simple tonight because I really want us to get this. This is very core and foundational to our understanding and our success in life. Shiva. The principle of manifesting the faith that works. Let me have two people, please. Any two people? Come. Please watch this. Stand here, Benga. You stand here. Promise. Watch this. Why is faith very important in the life of the believer? I want you to watch these people. This is... Hold this. This is God... Wanting to reach out to man. This is the blessing. Watch this. This is the breakthrough. This is the healing. This is the prosperity. This is the new level of grace. This is the insight. Are you getting me? And here is man. God so designed it. That there is between God. His desire to bless you. And down at your end. Your desire to receive. There is a law that connects that. That law is called faith. Are you getting me now? Faith is important because it is the biblical platform that authorizes God's power to come into your life. Faith is the platform that authorizes God's ability. My brother wants to see the power of God and it's not like God's ability is crippled. Lord, I want prosperity. Lord, I want healing. Lord, I want a miracle. Take me to another level. I want to begin to have encounters in the spirit. This is it. This is it. Fully paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. Right? And this is another imbalance that preachers say. 
the fact that a thing has been paid for does not mean it comes to you automatically. Is that true? I can pay for something and tell you when you go to the supermarket, it's paid for. But that does not mean it has been delivered automatically. See that? Faith. Faith is what connects you. Watch this. This brother is standing desperate. Oh God, would you not change my situation? 10 years, 15 years, nothing has changed. He's born again. He believes in Jesus. He believes Jesus died. He's a tongue talker. Maybe he even pays tithe in church. So seed confesses the word, but nothing is changing. Because this connection, are you seeing it now? God is asking that you authorize him. There is a connection between the power of God and where it is needed in this earth realm. Are we following now? Between you and that breakthrough is your ability to connect. Are you willing to authorize the hand of his majesty? He wants to come. Make no mistakes about it. God wants to reveal himself as a loving God. The love of God compels him to want to bless us. But the problem is that we have not been taught how to connect. Stretch your hands, promise, and connect this. This is faith. Once you lay hold on this, then there is, there's no limit again. There are many of us, thank you very much, guys. God bless you. And I don't know what they were thinking about. They're thinking, they're always thinking in partition. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's why I gave the example from beginning so that your, your desires will not be disappointed. Praise the Lord. Could it be, brothers and sisters, that where you are, where your family is, it's not just because the devil is so powerful. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not just because you may not be praying correctly, but maybe you have not been taught. There is nothing wrong in not knowing. The problem is when you are not willing to learn. Hallelujah. Faith is the platform. Never forget this. This is why we need faith. The platform that authorizes God's ability to be made manifest in a person's life. God needs an authorization to step into your life because he gave man willpower. When he said, let them have dominion, it became scripturally incorrect for God to interfere with man's life just like that. No. He needs an authorization. That's why the Bible says in the book of Revelations, it said, behold, I stand. And what? And what? This is God speaking. Why will he be knocking? Won't he just step in and say, I created you. Open that door whether you want it or not. No. Behold, I stand and knock. And I will keep knocking for as long as you are willing to open it. Tonight, may we authorize God to step into our lives. And he will see how small many situations are. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, the faith of God is at work in me. So what then is this equation of faith? How does it work? Now that we know that faith is not just, um, I would define faith at the end of the teaching, but that the workings of faith, we have little bits and pieces of it. So here and there we confess the word and we seem to have some consolation, but nothing major happens. Here and there we sow seeds, very good. But then that's not all there is. Here and there, we, we um, do what again? We are convicted. Oh Lord, I believe you. Are you not the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? God says, yes, so oh, I am. Huh? Are you not the one that parted the Red Sea? God will say, of course. Why are you not parting my situation? And then God says, allow me. Authorize me. Authorize me. That's why the Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for every outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. I repeat, the Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for every outcome of your life, meaning I don't do anything. All I have to do, after all, I was a sinner. You are the one who died for me. I didn't ask you. Now that you have died for me, make sure that everything goes well. Give me tea. Give me bread. Do everything for me. See that? 
and there is an imbalance of the grace message that if not careful stretches to that limit where it tells you God should do everything for you no sir there are two dimensions of grace let me say it very quickly I've listened to a lot of great mess, grace messages by different men and women of God and I agree absolutely with them in many aspects there may just be a need for some little adjustments here and there who's that what's wrong with her she's sick huh who brought her you came with her hold her now protocol and let her talk huh please hold the mother and let the lady come come you you can hold the mother what's wrong Her kidneys. Hold on, please. Where are you taking her? No. Bring her. It's a spirit. Bring her. It's not that she's restless and she wants to go out. It's the spirit. That's what happens to many people when they come for miracle service. Once I come up, you see them restless. They say, I'm going. It's a spirit. How long has this been? Huh? Can she talk? Mama, how are you? How long are you? Her brother, how long has this been? Her kidneys are what? Renal failure. Shika, you believe that Jesus will change all this? As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing, Jesus. We believe, Jesus. There is healing in your name. One more time, come on, sing. Imagine this were your mother. Jesus. We believe. Jesus. There is Don't cry. In your name. Don't cry. In the name of Jesus. The anointing is on all of you. All three of you. Right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I cause this devil of darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command brand new kidneys right now. Mommy, brand new kidneys. In the name of Jesus, I cause that devil of infirmity. I see you in the spirit. Go! In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Renal failure, I cause you. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I cause you. I cost 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 you. Hallelujah. Mama, look at me. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am healed. I am. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am. I am. Look at me. Everybody leave her. Leave her alone. Come. Come. Help her. Come. Help her. Hold this please. Help her. That devil is a liar. Please put this in. Walk. Come. Leave her. Don't hold her. Just guide her. Come. Come. Just turn around. Turn around. Help her. Turn around. Come. Kidney failure. That devil. Is. Look at she's happy. Look at what is happening. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Come. That devil is a liar. Let her come. Let her come. Help her. Just guide her. Let her come. That devil is a liar. Lift your legs, mama. Go ahead. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. 
In the name of Jesus. Listen, this is witchcraft. Your mother would have died on Sunday. They would have told you this woman is dead. She would have slept like that and woken up. Because as I looked, I saw the spirit. And I was looking, I said, what is this? And they were carrying her out. Look, it's better for them to come and die here than to get up. We are not playing games. This just came to prove the teaching. I'm about to say some other things. You must believe. They, they believed God, but they didn't stop there. They would have stayed in Shika, and this woman would have died because I see in a vision Sunday, they would have said it's over. Huh? Don't cry. Don't, don't cry, gentlemen. In the name of Jesus. Mama, I assure you, you will come back and stand here to give your testimony. That wicked spirit that has been tormenting you. Huh? Go and look. Has she been eating? She has not been eating. Because the Holy Ghost is ministering to me that Mama is hungry. Find something for her to eat. God bless you. Take her. Lift your hands and let's bless his name for one minute. Please sit down, sit down, sit down. Let's hurry up. Let's continue. Sorry about that. There is a spiritual strategy for manifesting faith. Just like we saw. I don't know how long our mother has been. But in seconds, you can authorize the power of God. See, I already sense the healing anointing. So as you are listening to me, if you are sick here, this is always what happens. Because when once, one miracle happens, the water is stirred. Right? Very important. Brothers and sisters, listen. It's not like these guys could not have prayed for mama. There is nothing special about me. This is what I want you to understand. The goal, I know some of you are saying I don't agree. There's, just listen to what I'm telling you. You know, you know as I preach, I, I discern your thoughts. I know what you are agreeing with and what you are not agreeing with. <laughs> Hallelujah. The equation of faith. Let me give you an equation of faith that if you practice, I guarantee you are touching the integrity of the maker of heaven. You will be shocked at what your life will become. It will begin to produce immediate results for you. Immediate results. Hallelujah. Pray in tongues for one minute as we prepare to receive this. We're hurrying up. Please, take it serious. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Don't just hear. Don't just look. See. Inside and outside. Pray in tongues. Participate. Open our eyes, we submit to you. Great Spirit of God, open our eyes. and this is the faith that overcomes even our faith this is number one the faith of God that produces results in your life always starts with revelation Bible faith, please hear me, always starts with revelation. You can never manifest true faith until there is a revelation. A revelation. The first piece of the equation of faith is revelation. And there are two dimensions to revelation. Please look up. The first is study. Study. 
study and the second is meditation you don't have revelation just by wishing study it first starts by searching out you cannot have faith in what you do not know i love this baby come ah she's afraid she's going to run to her mother now <laughs> May God bless. One, one of these days, our children will open the service for us. All of them will just hold the mic and blast in tongues for 10 minutes. Oh yes, many of them pray in tongues. At their age, we didn't even know whether, but, but God is doing a lot of work in our children. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. Revelation. So it starts with diligently searching. Everybody say diligently searching. Now, the problem with many believers you cannot spend your life just reading newspapers, chase magazines, name them, all those kinds of rubbish and expect to have Bible faith. Even if there is a column where a man of God quickly shared something, faith doesn't come that way. Brothers and sisters, there is an investment you must make in studying the word. Look at me. This is your promised land. You must walk through it. Every time you read the Bible, it's like you are walking through your promised land to see what God has given you, to see what has been apportioned to you. So as I study this, I see, Halabakatayada. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall also do greater works than this. As I study, I begin to see, if ye be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day. Right? That you will be exalted above all nations and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. Are you getting my point? When you are studying the Bible, imagine that you are walking around your land of promise. When you study the Bible, you are seeing the things that have been paid for. Are you getting my point? That cancer is killing you and you take the Bible and you search. And you see where he hung on that cross and he said, it is finished. But that has not entered you. You are aware. Remember, you are getting revelation and this is only the first part. That's why I'm telling you what many people call faith is not faith. So I begin to walk around the promised land. Like he told Abraham, he said, from where thou art, lift up your eyes and look eastward, northward. That's what you do. When you begin to study, it's like you are walking through your land of promise. Brothers and sisters, you may be soaking Gary, just walk through the land. Mm. You, are, you are no problem. There is no stove to boil the Indomie. Break it. As you are eating, walk. Walk. <laughs> you think I don't know how that thing works? be fooled by what you see there is a testimony of the transition of faith see that I was sharing with a lady that once upon a time I used to buy bread and cut it and put granite there's a way you arrange it so that with every bite you know the whole surface area is covered you push it in you are not the first to do it. So all that insult you've been insulting God, you said, look, there are people who did not even have the bread. Right? And God brought them out of it. So he will, he will bring you up. We just sang that our status is changing. But it starts as I walk through the land of promise. Everybody say the word of God is my land of promise. Say one more time, the word of God. I know tonight's teaching is very simple, but don't trivialize the power of it. The word of God is my land of promise. Ha! So I study, brothers and sisters. See, as I'm, I, I feel like just sitting down to start studying the Bible. As I'm just talking to you now. A weak person, a non-entity, nobody knows you. But when you walk through that land of promise, you are already engaging something. You may not understand. There's, I'm not denying the, look, I'm not denying the fact that you are in pain. Don't get me wrong. Faith does not deny what is happening. You see that? Aha. Uh -huh. So if I'm sick and I say, I have a headache, it's not negative confession. No. Please. If you want to say you are well, say you are well. But if I'm sick and I tell you something is, is pinching me here, it's not lack of faith. 
Are you getting my point? Many of us have felt so guilty. We don't even know when you are serious, when you are saying the real thing or not. You say, bros, can we get 20 naira? I say, I'm rich. Say, no, no, no. The issue is, you know, if you don't want to say, okay, there's nothing exactly in the pocket. Please, don't feel embarrassed. Don't make it look like the word of God makes you a fool. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't just speak anyhow and then things change. Speaking is a law. The Bible says a curse causeless shall not stand. Are you getting what I'm saying? So don't just say if I speak anyhow, whether I believe it or not, something I mean, Be wise. That's why we are growing. Praise God. Study. So I walk through this thing. Look, let me tell you how I study. Let me show you how I study. I don't study foolishly. I study strategically. Everybody says strategically. My goal of studying the Bible is not to crime scriptures. There are real needs on ground. Criming does very little in helping you produce results. I hope you are aware. You can cram Genesis to Revelation. The part you truly act out in faith is the part that works for you. Is that true? So I write different aspects of my life that I want to see the glory of God revealed. I write ministry. I write my finances. Are you following me now? Different aspects. And I begin to walk through the garden of the Lord. My promised land. Finding out what God's idea. What are his promises? What is his? What does his word have to tell me about this? How far can I be anointed? To what limit? The problem is. You see the reason why the devil kills your word study life right see when the devil wants to destroy you there are three things he just attacks it's very easy number one he kills your word life number two he kills your prayer life number three he kills your corporate fellowship life when these three are dead you are finished it's as simple as that just three things you want to go and study and all of a sudden that lukewarmness notice Ladies, you've read novels that are two times larger than this. But to read just three or four pages, that's to tell you there is a devil that does not want you to see something. Are you getting my point? I can give you a storybook and you can read. Many of you have gone to the library. You have gone to different things. There are many people who in your place of work, you are giving tasks that require you reading voluminous books and you do all of that within a week but how come when it comes to studying this you thought it's because the letters are small you brought you bought large letter edition it's still is big there is a there is a spirit hallelujah everybody says study it starts there let me not deceive you brothers and sisters faith is not cheap if you understand this, you will respect everyone who walks by faith. True Bible faith starts the encounter of the word. When you study, you find the promises. When you find the promises, the next thing is meditation. Everybody say meditation. It's still part of getting to the point of revelation. I'm trying to break down how faith truly works. Say meditation. What is meditation? The word meditation as, as is not just to, to speak aloud. The word meditation is the process that makes a revelation become your own. You see that? Okay, now you are studying. He told Peter, for instance, cast your net to the right side. How does that story relate to your situation in Zaria? Meditation. Meditation begins to draw out the spirit of that word. It begins to personalize it. It's in the place of meditation that some of us even have encounters. Real encounters. While you are meditating under a heavy unction, you can sleep and then you have a dream. In that dream, you can have encounters. Some of you can see men of God. Some of you can see people. And that thing crystallizes your conviction. You get up and hold that scripture and say, I caught this. See that? When, when there is meditation, the end of it is conviction. The whole goal of revelation 
is to bring you to a point of conviction. Another word is persuasion. I'm showing you how Bible faith starts. Persuasion. Persuasion. If you are not persuaded, you cannot finish the equation. Because you will doubt on the way. So you must strengthen your persuasion before the journey begins. Hallelujah. You don't believe in tithing. You just did it because your pastor laughed at you and said, Look, you have not been paying tight. I'm, I'm watching those who are standing. I'm working in the same office with you. It's, it's me that pays your salary. Eh? And, and you get angry. And you get afraid. And so just to please your pastor, you just squeeze your envelope and frown and stand. And you lift it up, let him see you. Oh, I'm dropping it now. You won't be blessed that way. That's mechanical. I never do things until I have the revelation for them. It's painful to do a thing without having the revelation. You'll be trying to copy others. And after wasting your time, you won't get their results. Don't be hasty in doing anything. Get a revelation. Hallelujah. Do you spend time meditating? Let me tell you, one of the greatest key to meditation is silence. Many of us are too noisy for the word of God to become alive in us. Is God speaking to us? There are times in the night, late in the night, I just carry a chair and I go outside and I just sit down. No noise. All the noise makers are asleep. And I just sit down. And I'm just praying in tongues. Sheep, alada, balada. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sometimes I could just carry. Worship is not noise. You can have that faint atmosphere of worship. And you're just sitting down. All of a sudden, a scripture like an arrow will fire into your spirit. When you share it with somebody, you'll be disappointed that they don't jump at it the way you jump. Because it's a revelation to you. Have you ever shared a scripture with somebody and said, my goodness, my brother, you are slapping your head while you are talking. Say, ah, is it not last week's coin? On your and you live there so sad and disappointed. Don't be disappointed. They are life to those who find them. To those who find them. It has become your revelation. Now you are ready to move to the next level. Are we following now? So the equation starts with what? Number one is revelation. And under revelation, it takes study and meditation. When a revelation has truly entered your spirit, it will bring conviction. Listen, I've said it again and again and let me repeat it. Revelation is not knowing what God has said. That's study. Revelation is knowing what it takes to make it work in your life. Hmm. Number two, the second dimension the moment conviction and persuasion is there, you believe it. That's why many of us stop. But that's not all there is. Let me shock you. The next dimension to the equation of faith is prayer. And I'll tell you why. It's not just acting. It's prayer. Listen to me. I'm telling you what works. Prayer. When you catch a revelation, the next thing is not to run. You will miss something major. This is where a lot of people miss it. Are you getting it now? When you catch a revelation, brothers and sisters, the next dimension is prayer. An investment praying in tongues. I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of praying in tongues, real fluent spiritual tongues given by the Holy Ghost, contend for it. We are more than ready to minister to you here. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost has settled this issue of tongues or no tongues in the body of Christ. You are the only one who has not had the revelation. It's a done deal. It's a settled thing. The advantages of praying in the spirit is, is beyond any denominational barrier or whatever it is. What does prayer do to you? Two things. Prayer reveals the strategy. Kabbalah katabala. It's not enough to know what God wants to do. There is always what you must do to commit God. Prayer is where you get the strategy. Hear me. It is not every place in scripture where the condition is verbatim. There are some situations that are customized to you. Let me give you an instance. 
you now read how Jesus healed blind Bartimaeus, right? Or how God opened the womb of Anna. I'm a, okay, well, I'm not a woman. I wanted to use an example. Of, <laughs> praise the Lord. Now, but imagine that there is a woman who is barren, unable to take in, and now she begins to meditate, seeing the ministry of fruitfulness all in the Bible. All the scriptures that God has placed for fruitfulness and all the barren women in the Bible who God opened their womb, she's studying and in it she begins to find spiritual keys. Are you getting my point? What they did, it does not mean you just, you can stand up, your situation may not afford you the opportunity to do exactly what they did. For instance, some people left to Jericho. Where is your own Jericho? That you, are you getting me? It is in the place of prayer. The Holy Ghost gives you your customized strategy. Are you getting my point? Two things happen in prayer. We are, we are a praying ministry. See, you must be a man of prayer to appreciate what I'm saying. If you don't pray, it won't make sense to you. As you begin to pray, the strategy comes. You can't obey until the instruction comes. Are you getting my point? Strategy. So I begin to pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, a crowd is packing full here. How are we going to get another venue? And I'm praying, humanly speaking, there may not be another venue. Lord, we thank you. What are you saying? And I begin to study the wilderness ministry of Jesus. How did they manage the crowds? What did they do? But we are not in the wilderness. So I need a rema. Are you getting my point? Prayer is what brings the spirit of the revelation. And then you will hear a word for you. Sometimes you can be praying. It is in the place of prayer that you get the customized revelation. And then two things happen. Number one, I told you, you get the strategy or the instruction. The second thing is you receive the grace supplied for obedience. You can never obey God until grace is given to you. Because some of the instructions that you will get from the place of prayer will be too hard. Some of the instructions may be empty your account. Some of the instructions may be pray all through the night. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Some of the instructions may be make sure you come and buy water here for three weeks. All kinds of instructions. That's why he not only gives you strategy, he releases the grace. Many people try to obey without the grace. This is the two-part dimension of grace that I want to explain to you. There is the dimension of grace that brings you into the finished work of Christ. And there is the dimension of grace supplied to you to obey, to actualize it. Right? It has been paid for, but you need grace to ensure its delivery. Someone's situation is changing. So you see that you prayed, you believed it. Oh, a job is coming. I found that revelation where Jesus, the, the master, told them, he said, why sittest thou idle? You see, you have to search. Lord, I'm jobless. Uncle, give me a job. You will, you will be frustrated forever. All those uncle and t thing. Many of us have never paid attention to this other option. You just hear it. But why don't you go back to the word of God? Lord, I don't have a job. Holy Spirit, guide me. And all of a sudden, the spirit of God, who, who searches the mind of God, begins to reveal to you. And you find that parable, for instance. You find the parable where Jesus was sending people into the vineyard. Is that true? And he met some people and said, Why sittest thou idle? Is that not a scripture now that relates to your situation? True study. There are Bible concordances. There are Greek and Hebrew Bibles. There is Bible gateway. There are many Bible softwares that ease your search. Huh? Scriptures on joblessness. Google. Enter. And scriptures come out. No, no, no. Look, don't laugh. Except you don't want a job. And you bring them out. Some may make sense. Some may not make sense. Just scan them. And you find you don't need plenty. It may just be one. And now you are getting that scripture. Watch this. When you get that scripture, you meditate. Lord, open my eyes. What made the master to call them? Was there anything on their part that they did? Is there something in between the line in this story that my eyes has not seen? 
Hallelujah. And you get it. So God is able. You see, the might, the revelation of the might of God begins to down on you. If God gave these people jobs and he paid them salary, it means I can get a job and they will pay me salary. And you begin to pray. The moment you begin to pray, don't just get up and act and say, yes, I've caught it, application. I hereby write for a job in this company. You must give me what grace is sponsoring that, 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 that religiosity. That's religion. That's why you open the office and they'll say, what are you saying? You say, I want a job. They say, walk out of here. Do you think? And you, and you now live disappointed. You went with a lot of zeal. God is good. He has done me well. And, and now you are there and, and you are disappointed because you did not finish the equation of faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The next thing you would have done is to take that revelation to the place of prayer. The threshing floor. Where your customized unique instruction is given. Somebody's breakthrough is already happening to him. Because God is showing you the missing link. It will work. And then I begin to pray. This is how I do with koinonia messages. I play the messages. And while the messages are playing. Because there are some things that I said by the Holy Ghost. The man of God is preaching and Joshua Selman is listening to him. And while he's preaching and praying, and I just hear something. Once you hear it, you are ready to act. Because the moment an instruction comes, that instruction can still refer you back to the Bible. Right? It doesn't just mean that you see an angel with wings. You can hear it and then an instruction will come. You can be praying and say, Lord, change my situation. As I go for koinonia, change my situation. And while you are praying, Lord, I believe you will change my life tonight. And while you are praying, a scripture just come. Jesus told the lepers, go and show yourself to the priest. You see that? That's a revelation that would have not made sense in a normal day. But to you, it is God's rema to you. And the Bible says, as they went. What, what does that mean? It means you should stand up and go. See that? And as you go, you commit the integrity of God to perform. So prayer reveals the strategy and it also supplies grace. Because there are some instructions, especially financial instructions. Some of you, you, have not, you are not givers. That's why it, 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 you don't get... There are some people here who are reckless givers. If you are a true giver, you know that you need grace. It's called giving grace. Because you are crying and saying, Lord, change my situation. Lord, I leave this 10,000. Something must happen. I don't have an uncle. I don't have an auntie. My father is dead. My mother is dead. I don't have anybody. I didn't have the opportunity to go to school. You are the only one I have. And Lord, if you do not help me, I have seen in the word of God that these are the situations. And God says, take now thy Isaac, that son. Are you a fool? You are about to go and use that money and at least even buy a Bible with it. And God says, I know it's a Bible you want to buy. Forward match. Sometimes God can tell you to go and sow it into the life of somebody you don't love. You can't pretend you didn't hear it. See that? But in that instruction, you are now ready to obey. That's the last final phase of the equation of faith. Prompt and complete obedience. Please write. Number one is revelation. Number two is prayer. Number three is prompt and complete obedience. Having all readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Prompt and complete obedience. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Please let's hurry up. Let me tell you something brothers and sisters. This is the hardest part of the equation of faith. Settling down to study is not the hard part. This is the labor dimension of faith. Are you getting me? This is where you labor in the spirit. It says, if ye be what? And not willing and desirous. Not willing and hungry. If ye be willing, revelation makes you willing. But obedience, the hardest part this is the link, brothers and sisters. This is the consummation of the faith equation. 
No matter what else you do that you call faith, if you do not obey, it is not called faith. Hallelujah. Confession, sowing of seeds, only become potent when we are willing to obey. When we are willing to obey. Everybody say obedience. I have found out that this is the link between where you are and where you need to go. Brothers and sisters, obedience is not child's play. Obedience is hard work. That's why you must receive the grace in the place of prayer. Lord, I know you are about to speak and I cannot pretend that I'm not hearing you. So grant me the grace that when the instructions come, may they not be too heavy. Yes. 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 That's all I'll say to him. Yes. Yes. your link to the next level yes. when you hear that instruction yes. it means your season is about to change a guarantee listen your obedience is what judges the devil obedience obedience oh I feel the anointing of the spirit I'll hurry up so that we will pray brothers and sisters obedience obedience we are going to look at one case study and then we'll support you with a few Isaiah 51 please quickly 1 and 2 let's hurry up Isaiah 51 Let's look at a man who from the Bible is called the epitome of faith. Isaiah 51. Hallelujah, verse 2. Everyone read. It says, look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone and blessed him and I increased him. That means God is giving you a case study. He say now that you know what faith is look at a biblical portrait on that study his life and you will find therein the keys so let's study abraham genesis 22 quickly please our first case study is abraham how did god turn an idol worshiper a mediocre in a small land called the awe of the chaldeans how did he become so prosperous how did he become the father of faith Hallelujah. Verse 2. It says, and he said, watch this. Okay, let's go to 12, verse 1 and 2, then we'll come back to 22. Genesis 12 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible, do you know that the person who was supposed to carry this, this fatherly mantle was his father, Terah? It was not Abraham. Terah missed it through disobedience. And the Bible says, now the Lord had said unto Abraham, get thee out of what? Are you seeing now? So we see that an instruction came. What was the instruction? Get out. Don't ask questions. Just move. It says, get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred father's house, unto a land that I will show you. He said, if you do this, here's the result. I will make of thee. Many times we cut the part of the scripture and just start claiming, I will. no, there was an instruction. Faith is a response to an instruction. Hmm. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Next verse. Verse 3 now. Help us media. 
Jesus' name. Please work together. We have to really rush. Okay, no problem. And then he finished all the blessings. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee. And in thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. When will that happen? When will that happen? What was the first instruction? Get out. Abraham would have remained there and he would have died an idol worshiper at the awe, at all of the Chaldeans. He got up and began to move. Go to verse 13. Chapter 13, sorry. Chapter 13, not. Chapter 13 from verse 1. And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot went with him into the south. Abraham took a step and he started moving. Lord said, I'm going with you. For joining in the obedience alone, the man became blessed. Are you getting me now? Lot was not part of the covenant. Like Ruth held on to who? Naomi. She was not supposed to be part of the lineage. She said, no way. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, prophet, thank you. I'm, I'm leaving. Ruth said, no way. Your obedience is my Whatever you do, I will do. 22 verse 1. Here was a test. The instruction was going to come. For that promise to become real. At this point, Abraham had begun to experience some, some kinds of things. Liftings and all of that. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt. The word tempt there is test. Abraham and said unto him, Abraham and he said, behold, here I am, verse 2. And he said, what? Take your son. We are understudying Abraham. Abraham did not just carry Isaac. He would have slaughtered his son for nothing with no blessing attached. You move as instructed, not as you wish. Either instructed by the voice of the spirit or the principles of the word. It's still the same. We have been taking steps out of our wishes and not out of the voice of God. It says, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I'll show you. Verse 3, may that be your testimony. Read the first line. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Everybody say prompt obedience. Delayed disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience in a measure. When God speaks to you, stand up. The moment you sit down there, that grace gets exhausted. And you find out you no longer can stand up. God told you to sow the seed. At that point, because it was in the place of prayer, you could do it. He said, wait, later on. When you came, you now calculated how much? 120. Hi! What did I hear like this? In the morning, you even said it's even 200 I'll give. But something has happened. See that? Or go and lay your hands on the woman in Shika. And you say, in the name of Jesus, I'm going. I know that they are used to seeing me just as a brother. But I'm going as instructed. And later on, you just say, let me quickly just go and greet Benga. Uh, and see whether he has prepared lunch. After the lunch and everything, you get up and your mind starts telling you, you self, they have already called you stupid even before you behave stupid. Now, by the time you go to the hospital, what if they drive you? What if something happens to the car? I say, oh Lord, I'll just intercede. After all, it's, it will soon be time for prayers. You see, the, the beauty of grace is you take advantage of it immediately. The grace for obedience must be maximized promptly. He rose up early. There is a reason why the Bible tells us that. Remember, we're understudying Abraham. He rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and so on and so on and so forth. Uh, let's go to verse 5. Verse 5. Okay, verse 7. He said, and Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, my father, and he said, here I am. He said, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb? The son didn't know he was the lamb. Next verse, please. Let's hurry up. And Abraham said, my God shall provide a lamb for his bond offering. So they went up together. Verse 9. And they came to a place which God had done this and that and that, and he bound Isaac. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth. Makalabo kataya. His obedience was about to be complete. Do you know if he did not leave that knife, everything he has done is multiplied by zero. 
It's painful when you start your obedience and stop. You've paid too much price. Why don't you finish it and, and commit God's integrity? Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Verse 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, lay not thy hand on the lad, neither do thou anything to him. He said, for now. See that? For when? Not when you left your house. Not when you were at the base of the mountain. For now. I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son. In other words, you obeyed me even unto death. The blessing follows. 13. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and beheld a ram caught by the thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it at a burnt offering instead of his son. 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. Are you seeing that now? Jehovah Jireh, you are singing it. Jehovah Jireh. Uh -uh. Don't just sing. What did he do that made that a revelation? My God shall supply all my needs. True. According to his riches in glory. But according to your obedience to the instructions that will bring that riches. 15. And the angel of the Lord called out of Abraham called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said by myself come on now this is God stepping in when your equation is complete Satan was not mentioned here it was a deal between God and he said by myself I have sworn because thou hast done done not said not confess oh I will kill Isaac in the name of Jesus Isaac you are dead in fact it's not that you are dying you are dead it's nonsense if there is no obedience he said, and has not withheld thy son. 17. He said that in blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply you. As, the, as, as thy seed, as the stars of heaven. And as the sun which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall what? Possess the gates of thy enemy. Please, I want you to make up your mind beginning from today. That obedience will become the watchword of your life. This is Bible faith. Obedience. In Joshua chapter 6, just write it. I will not need to go there. The walls of Jericho. I want to show you. In fact, when you go to Hebrews 11, the Bible begins to give us the archives of men who did exploit with what we know called faith. And you find out that for all of them, there may be variations here and there. But one common thing is that they all took steps when a word came. They took steps. Jericho. In Joshua chapter 1, the Lord began to speak to Joshua. He said, as I was with my servant Moses, so I will be with you. Right? He said, only don't be afraid, be courageous and so on and so forth. And, and you know, he looked at all of them. Now watch this. God had told him he had given him Jericho. But if they just went, do you know they would have killed them? Please learn this. Never obey. Just try to obey without prayer. Involve God. You will get the unique instructions. That's where the power lies. In the word. In the instruction. Hallelujah. When Joshua went to pray in the night, what happened? The strategy was revealed to him. So on one side, you will take Jericho. But there is a strategy. It's a strategy that was never used in the Bible for anything again. It came as a rema. And he told him, he said, walk around. That's the strategy. You walk around today and it may not walk until it is a rema. But he walked around. Seven times, right? And on the seventh day, he went seven times. And he said, now, Tehila, let there be a shout. That was a strategy. Other times, he told Jehoshaphat, he said, put the worshippers in front. And let them begin to sing and say you are good and your mercies endure forever. That's the strategy. For you, your strategy may be come for counseling. God can tell you there is an anointing you will receive and it will change your life. Write your name for counseling. Even if there is nothing, just come. That's a strategy. For someone else, the Lord will say go on a three-day fast. In the three-day fast, I will speak to you and you will catch a light. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you see that many of the things we call faith is not faith. It's not faith. It's just metaphysics. 
The widow in Zarephath. First Kings 17 from verse 7 to 16. Just write it. will not turn there for time's sake. Remember what happened. God commanded Elijah to go to Zarephath. There he will meet a widow. And watch this. He came and he met a woman in a state of lack and insufficiency. She needed to put her faith to work. But she could not put her faith to work until a word would come. And the prophet said, bring me water. The woman would have said, water for what? Water for what? And she took the water and as she was bringing it, he said, also bring me a morsel of bread. And she said, honestly, sir, this instruction is so much. He said, just do this. And the Bible says when she obeyed, her faith was released and she saw the supply. Are you seeing in scripture that all through the hallmark of faith is obedience? In my opinion, there is one word for faith, obedience. That's it. One word, obedience. If you do not obey the word, forget about the manifestation. When we were about to start Koinonia, I went to the Lord because the Lord had shown me in a vision. But where I saw in a vision, I could not relate with any physical place. And then I was, my mind had a lot of options here and there. But I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, I know that you are able to do this. All I need is a strategy. And I was praying, praying in the spirit, just lying down and worshiping. And all of a sudden, I had CGC. The Lord spoke to me. And I said, Lord, I don't even know the people here. How are we going to get access to the place? And the Lord told me, I've gone before you. You see, you don't need to do anything. Just stay there. The word has come. And see where we are today. The product of faith. It will work any day. It will work any time. One time I was praying and I said, Lord, how do we do now? There are sick people and your people need to be equipped. And the Lord said, turn the last Friday of every month to become a special time to minister to the people. When the counseling was getting too much, every day I said, Lord, what is, what is this strategy? And first we had moved to Saturday. And then the Lord helped us to arrive. Who does counseling on Monday by 11 o'clock? Does that make sense to you? But that's what God said. Look, brothers and sisters, if he speaks, start moving. Let your mind understand later on. Are you getting what I'm saying? Look at Jesus. I love Jesus. Jesus looks at a man who is blind. Sir, I am blind. And then Jesus makes mud. Right? Puts in his eyes and says, go and wash. Hapa. Go and wash. Go and wash. I'm blind. If I could see, would I come to you? They let me. He didn't say, neighbors, take him to go and wash. He said, find your way there. Same thing Elisha told Naaman. Go and bath. You can choose to be arrogant about it or you can humble yourself and enter that water seven times and change your story. Naaman said, but there are no rivers. The, the, the servant said, I'm walking with you. Soon I will leave you. Please, you better be healed so that this thing will be better for us. You are a liability to me. This and that and that. Go and bath. And he went. Watch this. He went and started obeying. But nothing happened till his obedience was complete. Six times he would have gotten up and just gone with mud like a fool. A man who brought victory. Right? He would have just moved and said, Ah, captain, where are you from? He said, well, One stupid prophet gave me an instruction. After six times I said, Come on, my pride will not allow me. Many of you started obeying. One step to see the hand of God, the devil brought you back. And look, nothing happened. One step. Some of you came for miracle service, for instance. And we said, in the name of Jesus, you shout that name, Jesus. And you just stood and said, I beg there is. People were just shouting like fools. And you were there. And said, ah, everybody was getting blessed, getting healed. Instructions. Instructions. The secret of true faith. When you get that word, obey. The truth is, we have not been obedient enough. And this is why we've not been seeing it. Look at the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and did what? The bread did not multiply in the hands of Jesus. Did it? No, sir. He gave them. He said, go and start sharing. Go and start sharing. Look at the 10 lepers. He told them, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. And they went at that word. The Bible said, as they went. Not before, as they went. 
it says this sign shall follow not go before you have to take steps a miracle always comes or the miracle always comes after the instruction or condition is met never forget this the miracle always comes after the instruction has been obeyed fully Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your ways. Oh, oh, yes, Lord. I will obey. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your ways. Four is defined as the action you take. Right, we are concluding. Faith is defined as the action you take based on your conviction of God's word and in line with the instructions required by God. Right. Faith is the action you take not the desire to act the very action you take based on your conviction of god's word and in line with the conditions or instructions required by god if you do that you have manifested what the bible calls bible faith otherwise you will just be playing games and talking games I told the Lord, whatever you demand of me, I will do. I was in Abuja and um, one of my very nice shoes that I love, I was polishing the thing to package it and the Lord told me, this shoe goes for so, so, so person. Someone sowed a very major seed into my life and as soon as I received it, God said, now you are an usher, pass it to so, so, so person. Years ago, I would have cried, but I've grown. Mm. Because every time his instruction comes, that's my status changing. That's it changing. Hallelujah. Last year, when we were starting Koinonia, the Lord said we should carry all the seed in the house and sow everything. Everything. The whole money. I told the finance department, I said the Lord has given an instruction. Pack everything. If God has told you you will marry a man of God, start praying for grace. Don't just say when. Pray for grace. Because you are, the man himself is, is enough to be a ministry for you. A true man of God is strange. Right? You wake up and see a man roaming like a zombie in your room. Speak, Lord, I'm listening. Honey, what's going on? I'm okay, it's alright. And you are wondering whether you are the one who is going as a sacrifice or not. Listen, you will never receive breakthrough beyond the level of your last obedience. Never, never, never. Don't reject the instructions of God. Every time you search the Bible, look for conditions, not just promises alone. What are the conditions tied to them? Hallelujah. I sowed that seed and in less than two hours more than 1,000% of that seed came into my life. Hallelujah. Crazy instructions that God has given me. Crazy instructions. I remember when I traveled to Canaan land as the instruction of the Lord. I went with a seed and I went there when I was done outside in the public, not in one small corner. The Lord told me, go on your knees on that ground. And I went down there. I've shared the story. You know about it. I've shared with you how the Lord instructed me to give everything. Everything. Hallelujah. I carried my Isaac. Dragged it into the church. And came and placed it on the altar like a fool. Don't want any man's glory until you can obey the instructions he obeyed. 
what you need to pray for is Lord grace there was a time the Lord instructed me I locked myself for three days non-stop my eyes did not see the sun did not see the sun because the Lord said so no sun no food no nothing the only thing that I did was to take my bath and that was because the bathroom was inside the room where I stayed no nothing are you willing to obey if ye be willing and obedient you will eat the good of the land hallelujah I told you about how I trekked from the roundabout in PZ right at the instruction of the Lord the roundabout in PZ I trekked to aviation praying in tongues I take this city the keys of this city is given unto me don't you sit down and see people coming and think it's just because I'm a young man it's not charm when you obey him his integrity is committed who is God speaking to tonight stop grumbling and complaining cry and say Lord what is the word for the next level because if he gives you that word you will rise to the next hallelujah I remember someone who one time his father was sick and he played an instrument for from night the Lord gave him an instruction to play an instrument from about 10 till about 6 in the morning he said just play that instrument non-stop and that guy was worshiping by the morning the father was healed look at me the arm of the Lord is not too short koinonia are you hearing me there are pastors there are people we like miracles but we hate instructions we hate instructions my life moves at the pace of the instructions of the Lord instructions of the Lord I think it was yesterday or day before yesterday I saw one suit that I like new suit they just showed it to me and the Lord showed me the face of someone in protocol ah! I said oh God this is going I called him immediately I said where are you I said come quickly this is for you and he came and I gave you a surprise. I said, bye bye. Before any unbelief will enter, and I'll collect my team back. Go. I love you, Jesus. That was from the spirit. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Oh, it takes faith to move mountains, brothers and sisters. I love you, Jesus. There is no instruction I will not obey. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Listen. It says, through faith, they subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They shut the mouths of lions. He said, what more can I say? For time will fail me to speak to you about Gideon and Barak and Jephthah. Ordinary men who obey God to the latter. Sister, when you obey God, that man was come. It doesn't matter where he is. Forget about witches and wizards. Concentrate on your obedience. Concentrate. There are some of you, God told you, Drag your family members and bring them here. The word came with the grace for it to happen. You say, Master, we have toiled all night. There are times God can use a man to speak to you. They tell you, go and listen to relationship and family life. I have listened to it before. No, no. Remember, you are responding to a word. Don't forget. He may tell you to do what you have always done. But this time around, there is an anointing upon it. You will do it and see very seemingly crazy instructions. God can tell you, just sit down on these drums. And just be playing and clashing the cymbal and praying in tongues. Do it. Do it. If you are ashamed of men, forget about greatness. You will never carry certain levels of the anointing. I went for six hours in Joss, standing at the Renhard Bonke Kuse because I was desperate. And, and I set my gaze on that man because there was something I wanted to land on. I was not sitting down asking stupid questions that people ask when they go to places. Ah, this, man, this white man, why is he wasting our time? 
Is there Rema or no Rema? That was not my, I was at my, my, my face was set like a flint. Brothers and sisters, listen. Wait, the financial prosperity series I'm about to preach, I truly believe it will cause a revolution. There are new things that the Lord has shown me that I put my hand on my head. I say, my goodness, Joshua Selman, where have you been? Your life must change. We're in the season of the rain. Obedience is the platform. Don't blame anybody. Take responsibility. There are only three prayer points tonight we are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. Sorry about the time. We are really working on beating the time. But I want you to pray. Begin to thank God for the word tonight. Begin to thank him for the word tonight. It's time for new levels of grace. New fountains. New levels of impact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray. Prayer point number one. Lord, help me and give me a receptive spirit to hear your instructions and to see your conditions as demanded by scripture. Lift your voice. Please pray seriously. This is the time to pray and not walk around inside and outside. Let our spirits be opened, O oh God. That as we study, may we see instructions. May we not just see promises, but conditions. Your level is changing, I tell you. Your level is changing, I tell you. God is not a man that you should lie. He's not the son of man that you should repent. Lord, I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I'm receptive to your instruction. Hallelujah. Listen. There are conditions tied to you walking in divine health. There are conditions tied to influence and increase and honor. There are conditions tied to prosperity. There are conditions tied to longevity. Find out. We have preached these things. Our messages are full of these keys. Prayer point number two. Lord Jesus, speak to me. Speak to me. I'm ready to obey. Speak to me. Let your word supply grace. Reveal the strategy. Pray. Show me the key to the next level of breakthrough. To the next level of influence, to the next level of encounter, to the next level of the anointing. <laughs> Through dreams, 
direction through the written word through prophetic direction instructions will come in messages as you walk Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number three. I want you to pray this with all your heart. Cry for a fresh supply of grace for prompt and complete obedience. Some of you, God has given you instructions. There are seeds to sow. There are places to go. There are tapes to listen to. There are encounters. There are retreats to have. You have not obeyed, so you will never see his glory. Lift your voice and cry. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch this. It is after you obey that you can now begin to confess. And then you can now sow a seed and tie a seed to it. Except if the sowing of the seed is the instruction. Or that if I'm believing God say for a house and I find out God gives me an instruction go and get an architectural design and see the kind of house you want that's an instruction don't sit down and start giving foolish arguments now I go and I say Lord I found what I want here. God will say go and estimate how much will it cost now you, co you estimate and you say it will cost 15 million <laughs> you are sitting down all you have home and abroad is 500 naira forget about it and it, look the blessing is in the instruction. It's not in what you have. Whether, you, you, whether it is 1,000 or 1 billion, it is still faith that will bring it. Hallelujah. And now you begin to pray. And while you pray, God will say, relax. He said, don't worry. Just relax. It will come as a seed. You have heard the word. You stand still. And you begin to prophesy. Or God will say, now go and sow a seed for it. Or you want to get married, for instance. And, and, and you are praying and you are thanking God you are saying Lord thank you for this and then you find out God gives you an instruction in the place of prayer maybe go and wash the plate go to one woman who is already married he may even be your friend he said just go on a Saturday and help them sweep and wash their plate that's the instruction if you are too ashamed to do it forget about marriage it may be crazy but go and do it after you have done that then you can now begin to prophesy and you can now connect with a seed and say, Lord, I sow a seed into this and I speak. My marriage is coming. The man that God is bringing, like our sister said, is a blessed man. He's a godly man. Your obedience is complete. Something is wrong with your family. Your husband or your wife is misbehaving and all of that. You don't sit there and say, me and you will enter the same trouser. What has entering the same trouser got to do with, with the solution? You don't need to enter the same trouser. You need a word from God. All these stupid cultural things that we put, we must enter the same trouser. And do what? Is it going to solve the problem? Get a word from God. Where you are confused, come for counseling. This is the situation. What do you think? What is the, what is the scriptural mystery? What is the principle that is responsible for the delivery of this? Right? That's why we pray. That's why we come here all the time. We are dispensing mysteries. As these mysteries are dispensed, it's falling on different people. You catch it and you walk with it. It has changed the lives of people from nothing. It has taken people to wherever they will go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very fearful and touching testimony. A gentleman 
listen to my message. He's been following my teachings and he's been listening to my messages and they're trusting God. He's a real estate person. He's trusting God for breakthroughs and all of that. And then a miracle just happened to him. Within a short time, they gave him 60 hectares of land to develop and sell. His profit from that is 300 million. He's a young man like me. The word. As if that will finish. When I, when I got to Abuja, he made sure, every time I go to Abuja, he makes sure he's the one driving me around. He said, I must drive you. The last time I went, he said they gave him another 40 hectares, making 100 hectares. What is it that God cannot do? Your obedience. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your obedience. But there are certain dimensions of power that will only be released on the strength of intimacy. So it is from that standpoint of encounter, you begin to explore the systems of God. The systems of God defines his way of operation. And the moment you comprehend that, then you will truly access power. Ignorance. You can be born again and be ignorant. Number three, disobedience. The last access point of Satan is disobedience. Willful refusal to comply with God's principles. Willful refusal. That's disobedience. You're not doing it out of ignorance. The Bible says having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. Not when you start. When it's complete. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 says and it shall come to pass right that if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day it says that you shall be exalted above all nations and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you then he begins to list them it shall come to pass if thou will diligently joshua verse one uh, chapter one verse eight right the lord was speaking to joshua and then he says this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth he says but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all all not some observe to do right then he says then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and you shall have good success it's very important obedience 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 it's not just hearing what God has said. Obedience is doing what God has said. In John chapter 2, when the servants came to Mary, she said, whatsoever he tells you to do, he said, do it. Hallelujah. Paul the apostle was encouraging the, the early church and he said, now that ye know these things, in fact, it wasn't just Paul, I think it was Jesus himself. He says, now that ye know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Now that you know, happy are you if you do them. These brothers and sisters, as mysterious as Satan looks, this is the only way he can find expression. His possibilities are finite. They are not infinite. Number one is covenant. The strongest access point to Satan or to, or of Satan into people's lives. And then number two, we have ignorance and number three, disobedience. And that's why we are gathered here tonight. That God will grant us grace to take advantage of the provisions that have come in Christ and end this, this buffeting of darkness over our lives and destinies. And I pray that it will be someone's testimony tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for you from the depth of my heart that as God begins to touch people he will touch you and end this captivity in your life once and for all is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am 
listen I want you tonight to believe God do not come to God carelessly listen the Bible describes the kind of attitude we must have when we come to God Hebrews 11 verse 6 it says for without faith it is impossible to please him he said for he that cometh unto God must come believing must believe that he is that means he exists and then that he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him so every time you approach God you don't come to try let me find out whether God can touch this cancer let me find out whether God can end my captivity no you come to him believing say I'm a believer so tonight I want you to approach the mighty God knowing that he's able to do all things believe me you have your requests you have your needs take your eyes away from that infirmity and believe in God it does not look it can be within the twinkling of an eye and God will change your story it doesn't take him time God is not a carpenter he doesn't build by nailing things he builds by speaking are we together now he called darkness light and it became light I really believe God and I came here tonight trusting that God will touch us it's going to be a very quick walk that's why I'm taking out the time to speak to us very quickly let me just take the altar call now look up please let that be the first miracle tonight let's take the altar call so that as we begin to move and just flow we'll just move in one single sweep there's a lot to do tonight and we want to save time so that we can finish on time I told you that there are three access points of Satan one covenant two ignorance three disobedience are we together John chapter 3 from verse 16 says for God so loved the world he said that he gave his one and only begotten son who is no longer his one and only but the first begotten of we because he has called many of us into glory are we together then it says that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life the thing i love about the faith life is that you are never forced to do anything your response in the kingdom is always a product of revelation and your willingness if you are willing and obedient then you will eat the good of the land there are people seated here right from praise and worship there are so many listening to me the first overflow and all the overflows around there are so many connecting uh, you know on our social media platforms and you're hearing my voice right now and the Holy Spirit is telling you the man of God is talking to you the first miracle that can happen to you tonight is the miracle of ending the mismanagement of your life by trying to run it your own way are we together that you hand over your life when you come to Jesus you don't just come and accept him in your heart you take your heart and say Lord I give you everything not I give you my spiritual life I hand over my entire life to you everything i've been through use it for your glory lord i offer my life to you everything that's true repentance that as you come here you are not just coming because you are feeling guilty you are coming here sincerely saying i'm tired of mismanaging my life there's got to be more than this there's got to be more than living my life the way I want I must come under authority and I know there are so many people inside and outside hearing my voice some of you have never made this decision to make Jesus Lord of your life you've made a decision to go to church you've made a decision to join a religion called Christianity but you have not made a true decision to surrender everything and there are people there's another category i'll call all by uh, at, at once so that we'll save time 
there are those who at one point you truly made a genuine decision but the cares of this life the challenges in your life just overwhelmed you and right now you know that as it is right now as it is right now you cannot say things are all right between you and God you've backslidden you've you've turned away but the Bible says if my people who are called by my name it says shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then it says then we lie here from heaven and will forgive their sin and then will heal their land forgiveness will always follow healing are we together I'm going to make an altar call right now any of the overflows outside inside here very fast I'll count one to ten listen there are people the Holy Ghost is speaking to and you know that you need to make your ways right with Jesus you're saying Lord things are happening in my family I do not even know the name of what is going in my family the first key is to surrender your all to sacrifice everything before his throne and say Lord I'm not just coming to receive healing I'm coming to start a new life it's called Zoe God's very life not another kind the very life of God hallelujah praise the Lord before I make the altar call I want us to all close our eyes and pray in one minute intercede for those who are about to come and say Lord no power will stop them from coming no power will stop them from coming we believe in the salvation of souls this is not a cinema where we are watching football this is a place where God is changing lives and destinies pray as you are praying for many of you the Lord is going to be speaking to you right now there are so many outside in all the overflows it's like you've been waiting for a man to call you and say return home he's calling you he's calling you hallelujah now I'm going to count one to ten wherever you are please I'd like us to begin to celebrate them outside inside don't wait for others you are returning to Christ and you are making this decision for the first time leave your seat and make your way quickly one we we'll count one to ten don't wait for anybody God bless you they are coming two please clear the way for them outside don't let no friends stop you Jesus is calling you no 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 you are doing you are doing a very noble thing don't let any friend please encourage them outside if you came with anyone don't stop them from coming out God will punish you if you stop anybody from coming out because he's your friend it's, it's, it's an entirely um, it's a personal affair God bless you keep coming Koinonia a sacrifice of your uploads to motivate them and encourage them Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Keep coming. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you hallelujah the Lord is still speaking to me that there are people you need to make your ways right with God in fact the Lord is showing me at least three ladies you've not prayed like for the last two months because you are asking what I have done will the Lord really really open up himself to me and the Lord is saying you should make your way to the front clear the way for them please clear the way I don't care whether you are a pastor you are a prophet make your way to the front this is serious business I believe there are still people outside in the overflows the first the second overflow and across the road please make your way to the front we are going to wait for you one more minute we are going to wait for you we are going to wait for you please don't play games with God tonight this is your destiny 
he wants to bless you he says for i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord jeremiah 29 11. he says thoughts of peace thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end i believe in you i believe in you let's all sing this song one more time and then we'll pray for them Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Hallelujah. I sincerely want to appreciate us, young and old. We're all here to receive Jesus Christ. Look at me, please. If I, if I give you a new phone, you don't accept it as though you are embarrassed you accept it with gratitude salvation is greater than any other thing you will be receiving tonight are we together and so i want you to be very proud of what you are doing whether you are being restored or you are giving your heart to jesus for the first time just make sure you are not reciting a poem make sure this is from the depth of your heart are we together lift your right hand high to the heavens and say this after me i'm just guiding you but the most important thing is the sincerity of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he died for me. I believe that he rose again for my justification. Tonight, I make Jesus my savior my lord i hand over my life and my destiny to your care and i ask that you be my lord my god my king forever from today the hold of sin the hold of the flesh over my life comes to an end this is a new beginning in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted as I pray for you. Father, you see these hands lifted. They have made genuine, sincere commitments. I pray that the Spirit of God that is our seal of redemption will be a witness to this spiritual transaction. And I pray in the name of Jesus that from tonight, let there be a new beginning. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a new beginning for every one of us. No going back to the world, no going back to the flesh by the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. A big congratulations to all of you. This is the best decision you would have made in your entire life. Hallelujah. Now, I'd like you to follow. Okay, this way. We're going to follow um, the ushers as they lead you. There'll be a group of people to have your names, your details, and we'll follow you up. They'll be very brief so that you come back and join us. Um, please be very fast with them because we're about to get up to the ministrations right away. God bless you. Thank you for this great decision. Let's honor them. Koinonia, bless them. Bless them. Let's honor them as they go. Please rise up on your feet. We are going to pray for a few minutes. Hallelujah. We are about to pray for a few minutes. And I want our hearts to be open. Let's participate in the prayer. Hallelujah. Listen. When we pray, hear me, when we pray, we authorize heaven to step into our lives. Are we together? This is a miracle service and I want us to pray. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, please media help us. We're about to pray. We're about to pray. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. It says, call on to me and i will answer call on to me and i will answer he says and i will show you great and mighty things 
which thou knowest not call on to me you see prayer is a sign of humility because it's an indication that there is so much i do not know and there is so much i cannot do are we together prayer is a sign of humility when you call on god to step into your life it is because you acknowledge that he is able lift your voice in one minute and say lord i know you are able lift your voice come on pray 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 we are praying please open your mouth and pray Lord, I believe you are able. That's why I'm here tonight. I believe you are able to heal that cancer, to heal that HIV. Lord, I believe that you are able to give me a new story. I acknowledge you, I recognize you as the mighty God. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He is the mighty God. You are the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. The great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I declare that every force tying down my life tying down my destiny tying down my progress you come under arrest tonight lift your voice and begin to pray oh come on koinonia are you praying every force Oh, you come under arrest tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I set before you this day blessing and cursing, life and death. But he says, I advise you, choose life so that you and your family will live. I'd like you to say in the name of Jesus. I make a decision. Tonight, I make a choice. Tonight, that I must leave this place free. I'd like you to open your mouth and mention the challenges that brought you here and say, I am determined. I make a decision. I make a decision. I make a decision. I make a decision. Make a decision. Are you praying? Shabara katalaba, mambra katalakata. I make a decision. I make a decision. Please pray. Make sure you are praying. I make a decision. 
I must walk out of here healed tonight. I must walk out of here changed tonight. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. Every covenant orchestrated by darkness to keep me limited in life, to keep my family limited in life, Tonight, I declare that this is my night of victory. Lift your voice and cry, cry, cry. Cry unto the God of your salvation. They must be broken. They must be broken. I contend. I contend by faith. I contend by faith. Contend by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and God had blessed him in all things. I like you to pray and say, Every area that is not working, say it every area in my life that is not producing results. Tonight, you come under the influence of the anointing. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Your finances may not be working. Your spiritual life may be working. You are praying your, to a new dimension of grace. Shaba karada balada da 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 ba. Kali, we declare your majesty. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to the instruction the Lord is giving me. Please listen. Let's walk together, guys. Please, let's walk together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to shout three times. Listen. Hallelujah. Because what I see in the realm of the spirit is like I'm standing on top of this building and I'm seeing like a pot boiling but it's about to tilt. That's what I'm saying. And the Lord is telling me that at the third shout, we are going to shout once, shout two, by the third shout listen the first thing that will happen by the time we take that third shout there will be such an explosion of the power of God a mighty deliverance anointing and that's how we're going to start off tonight are we together it's called a healer it's a mystery it's a mystery that crumbles walls 
when they went round the walls of Jericho they shouted the instrumentalists everybody together hallelujah just be stupid enough to obey this instruction and watch the God of wonders do mighty things in your life you are shouting pain away you are shouting sickness away you are shouting captivity away hallelujah my goodness I'm telling you the power of God is so strong in this place mighty 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 I'm going to count three when I count three listen I want you to shout from the depth of your heart hallelujah and then the second time we are going to shout listen as surely as the God of heaven lives by the third shout in the name of the Lord God whose I am and who has sent me the wonders that will happen in your life by this third shout is a mystery brothers and sisters how God operates are you ready one Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, all those under the anointing, just bring them out. But really, it's from the third time. Are you ready for number two? We're shouting powers out of men's destinies. We're shouting thrones, dominions that have tied down the lives of men. Are you ready? One, two, three. hallelujah now be sensitive oh i feel it on me here it comes that grace that unction that grace that unction by the third shout hear me angels will begin to move in dramatic ways there will be an eruption of the power of god inside and outside are you ready i make a decree in the realm of the spirit and i pray according to the word of the lord as we make this shout i command thrones i command dominions i command altars and everything tying the destinies of men to give way in the name of the lord jesus are you ready now one two three mighty things happening to men already I tell you it's like volcano that's what I see in the spirit falling on people falling on people you baby There are 21 people. I see prophetic mantles. The mantle of the prophetic. The mantle of the prophetic. 21 people. That's what I see. 21 people. Right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus, wherever they are, at the count of three, let that mantle fall on them. 21. One, two, three. Take it. Take it, take it, new wine, 
take it. Prophetic mantle. Prophetic mantle. Prophetic mantle. I call it so. I call it so. I call it so. Mantles, 21 people stepping into prophetic anointings by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I activate it. I activate it. I activate it. I stand under this apostolic anointing. I activate it. seen in the realm of the spirit Chains. this is a spirit of limitation lift your hands everyone I want to take authority over this spirit wherever you are inside and outside I like you to get ready if you are in this category something will happen to you let the sword of the spirit part those chains open are you ready I command the chains be broken now be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. There's a family God is liberating. A whole family. They are here. I'm seeing God touch them. Right now. Giving them miracles. hallelujah lift your voice in one minute and say lord speak to me speak to me send a word that will bring me hope send a word Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm hearing the name Memuna. We have to rush. I'm hearing the name Memuna. Is there someone with that name here? Memuna. That's what I'm hearing. Shabakoto Paratoya. Memuna. Outside. Who is that? Memuna, you are outside. Who is that? Come. Look at me. Where are you coming from? Huh? I'm looking at you. Listen, look at me. You just came from somewhere here. Huh? Is there a, a mic? I'm looking at you. And I'm seeing you enter transport. And you are coming from Abuja to come here. Where did you come from? From Abuja. From Abuja. That's where you are coming. Because I look in the realm of the spirit. And I'm seeing you in a car. And you came. And I'm seeing you praying. And asking God to visit you. 
and visit your family is that why you are here your family you were saying if only you come here god will visit your family and god is saying he's bringing a breakthrough to Memuna and her family in the name of the lord jesus christ i break that curse over your family by the power of the holy ghost it lives forever lift your hands and give jesus praise lift your hands and give jesus praise lift your hands and give jesus praise look at me please call the lady again my dear where is your mother huh what's she doing huh she's a civil servant she's a civil servant we have to pray because the devil wants to put sickness she's complaining of pains in her body she went to the hospital huh she may not have told you she went to the hospital last week and they said she should be careful because she's having problems with her back yes. is that true yes. that's what the doctor said that she's having problems with her back yes. this is witchcraft it's not just pain like that your mother cannot even watch for 10 minutes her yes. back will start paining yes. her yes. in the name of jesus christ we pray for mama right now wherever she is let there be a supernatural miracle for her in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ madam can i talk to you please yes that madam that one with um yes please make sure you are praying god is touching people we just want to be fast i wish we had time no 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 you don't have to kneel down please stand up where are you coming from madam from jigawa jigawa state jigawa state yes I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit I'm seeing a woman who has gone through pain and she's crying and I'm wondering why are you going through all of this uh, some of them I may not be able to say it here but you were invited here I'm with my sister. that's what I'm my saying where is here. she I'm seeing two people where is the sister come come and stand Hold on. I'm hearing the Lord speak to me and saying there are two other people. Yes. There are two other people again yes. that you came with aside from you. Where are they? they, are, they are. Where are they? Two other people. Where are they? Please come and stand. I want to announce to you, all of you, that God will give you a testimony tonight that will surprise you. Please, I want you to believe. I want you to believe me. The things I see, I may not be able to tell you right now because um, one of you has a problem with your husband. I don't want to go into... Hold on. I, should I talk? Do you want me to talk? Calm down. Let me talk to you. You came out. Let me talk. Madam, please look at me. Your husband needs deliverance. You believe what I'm saying? You love God. You are a sincere woman. But your husband needs deliverance. Huh? Where is he? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a woman crying. A man coming to vomit. Huh? Like I'm a vomit from drunkenness. And then this thing is telling on you. Huh? Are you a Christian? You love the Lord. I'm seeing you praying for this woman. Yes. Huh? Yes. That's yes, why I asked her, how do I know you are wearing something? I'm seeing you praying for her. Yes, In fact, sir. even when you stood there, you are saying that God should locate this woman yes, and sir. bless her. Yes, I'm hearing sir. your prayers. The Lord is ministering it to me and he's saying you should bless her. And the Lord God of heaven is saying he's going to bless her and bless you too. Hold on. Let me talk to you. Will you believe what I tell you? Why am I seeing you in a wedding gown? Are you married? Yes, sir. I'm seeing you in a wedding gown. Listen to me very yes. carefully. And I'm seeing two men standing. Hold on. I'm seeing one man and I'm seeing another man. Yes, and the man is saying he married before this one. Yes. He comes to you in a dream. Yes, is that sir. true? Yes, sir. This man I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Tell me the truth. Now don't be embarrassed. Yes, this has affected your marriage. Stand up. It's time to deliver you. Because I'm seeing you get married and I'm seeing two men. Your real husband and another one in the realm of the spirit. He comes to you in a dream. But the Lord is saying I should set you free. Elohim you reign. 
this morning your mother is in the hospital it's part of the reasons why you came here please who is that your mother you left her in the hospital and you came here please when you get that person let me pray for her because God wants to do a miracle I want to pray for you the Bible says what God has joined let no man put asunder God did not join you on any spirit entity and he's going to deliver you in the name of Jesus be free let her go now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I speak to you by the power of the Holy Spirit madam please look at me your husband needs deliverance his own money finishes on friend and friends and beer is that true is that true because I'm seeing him not only drink but buying for his friends and they finish the entire money you are a very kind woman but the truth is he's not giving you even one naira you don't even get money from him but the lord is going to be changing things now let me tell you how it will change it will look as if it's getting worse but you watch and see what god is going to be doing you believe that yes i'm going to pray for you father in the name of jesus christ let there be a miracle a supernatural miracle a supernatural miracle a supernatural miracle there is a woman from katsina there is a woman from katsina a woman from katsina that's what i'm seeing a woman you are outside you didn't cover your hair you are from katsina where is that person is there someone like that please where is that person why are you clapping where's the person please come from katsina look at me stand up stand up madam stand up your time of breakthrough has come look at me the lord is saying i should quote a scripture for you when the Lord again shall turn your captivity, He says you'll be like them that day. Madam, you have cried enough in this miracle service. The God of heaven is about to wipe your tears. Mary, Mary, who is Mary? Mary, Mary. I know there are many Marys. Hold on, please. Hold on, let me call the Mary. The Mary is in this row. Mary, you are seated here. No, 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 no. At the back, you are wearing a dark cloth. Right here, you didn't cover your head. The Mary is in. No, like, I don't know if it's a dark cloth. Like, it has flower. It's a gown. It's a gown, straight down. Gown, not gown with skirt. Is there someone like that? Mary, this robe. The angel of the Lord is there. Is it a gown or someone? I'm seeing something with flower. Is there someone like that? Please find out. Mary, I need to talk to that person. I need to talk to that person. You're the one? Okay. Well, come, I'll talk to you. Madam, where are you from? I'm from Akwaibo. You are from Akwaibo? I stayed in Katsina. Are you, are you married? Yes. Where is your husband? He's in Katsina. I have to pray for you. God wants to give you breakthrough. My goodness, lift your hands. I'm telling you, I just saw like a wind and the Lord said they are angels. Watch what happens in the congregation right now. Angels, 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 angels bringing impartation to people. I just saw like a wind in the spirit. Angels cutting away things. That's what I'm seeing. Angels cutting away things from people. They are removing things in people's bodies. That's what I see. Like a slimy substance living people this is breakthrough breakthrough god is giving people breakthrough hallelujah ma let me pray for you what do you do ma hallelujah hold on i'm looking at this woman don't be afraid correct me if i'm wrong i'm looking at you where is kasham i'm looking at you ma and i'm seeing her name 
on your head and I was wondering and the Lord no 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 hold on come come I'm looking at this woman and, and I'm seeing the name of this lady Kasham on her head and I thought your name is Kasham but the Lord told me it's not Kasham the, what she's practicing is what you are now what what are you doing I'm a nurse what are you doing I'm a nurse you're a nurse that's what I'm seeing in the spirit that's what God is telling me because I'm looking at you and I saw her name written on your head and the Lord said I should call her and make see this is not diabolic Hosea chapter 12 it says I have spoken to you by the prophet I have multiplied visions he said I have spoken to you in similitudes this is not jamboree we have a lot of things to do God is locating people and when he's doing it for one he's doing it for many people time will not allow for everybody to be called but I just want you to believe believe in what God is doing in the name of Jesus Christ that's that's the, that's the only reason why you are here Ma, I want to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord promoting you and lifting you you believe that if God grants grace you will return and testify hold my hands ma in the name of Jesus Christ may the God of heaven promote you and lift you right now in the name of Jesus ma I want to pray for you where are you from please I'm from Anambra but I'm from Jigawa I want to pray for you what do you do I'm a nurse, I'm a nurse. you are a nurse too yes. I want to pray for you the devil wants to put sickness in your body and this is not a nice this is not something I will even say the devil wants to put it in your body but will take authority over it right now please hold my hands man in the name of Jesus Lord he will fortify her I, I command that spirit to leave you right now out the devil wants to put sickness in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ ma look at me the pain is living and you are going free you have cried I have I'm seeing a woman who has cried but God is stepping in hold my hands in the name of Jesus Lord the grace that makes things happen may that grace bring this woman out of pain in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I want to pray for you come stand here I want to pray there's bad luck in your family huh? serious bad luck where's your father Quara State. Quara State. I'm seeing a man in Quara State just going around in circles, not even doing anything meaningful. We have to pray. It's one thing to move physically, but it's another thing for your life to move too. Huh? And I'm going to pray for you. You love Jesus. Please be very serious with the Lord. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Emeka. Emeka. I'm hearing the name of someone. Emeka. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let there be a miracle for you let there be a miracle for you in the name of Jesus Emeka the Lord is ministering to me I'm hearing the name of someone Emeka the Lord is giving you a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ Emeka you are outside I'm seeing two Emeka coming I tell you I see like a screen one you have beard one you are wearing white Elohim, you reign, you reign, you reign. Elohim, you reign. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the spirit of death on you. Don't be, I'm not a prophet of doom. But I'm seeing the spirit of death on you. The devil wants to destroy your life. We have to pray for you. Sir, look at me. What do you do? You are a student. I'm going to pray for you. You love Jesus. And the hand of God is upon your life. Huh? It's not just an ambition for business. But the anointing of God is in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sir, I need to pray for you. I need to pray for you and destroy something that wants to kill you. Huh? So it's just a simple prayer. I'll pray for you. Don't be afraid. I'm not. I'm, we are not prophesying doom. You get what I'm saying? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that thing to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ, that devil of darkness, it leaves you right now. Sir, hold my hands. I pray. 
that the anointing of the spirit will come upon your life right now step into a new level of grace by the power of the holy ghost it's not by power it's not by might i bring an anointing to your life that takes you to a new dimension in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ there is a lady who is going to shout under the anointing just carry her like that and bring her to me there is a word no it's inside here it's not outside right here carry her like that and bring her it's a message just carry her like that and bring her this is what i see in the realm of the spirit as she's lying down like this that's what i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit and i'm hearing ezekiel 2 verse 2 it says and the spirit entered me and set me upon my feet the lord is bringing not just deliverance to you and your family but the lord is bringing i'm hearing the word restoration and the lord is saying i should prophesy to you receive it in the name of jesus it comes upon you by the power of the holy spirit please bring this lady for me just just carry her carefully if she can please lift your voice and pray and say lord visit me in the name of the lord jesus christ i break every hole you have with her life in the name of jesus i'm looking at a lady in the realm of the spirit and i'm seeing a spirit wearing a crown and the lord is saying he's removing that crown that's what i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit this is a lady who loves god but i see her connected to things that have to do with marine powers and i'm seeing the lady with a crown and the lord is taking it in the name of jesus christ i command freedom right now by the power of the holy spirit i command freedom right now be free go let her go now by the blood of jesus christ hallelujah please lift your hands i want to pray before we pray for the sick there's something the lord is showing me please i like you to lift your hands just do what i'm asking you to do lift your hands the power of god is going to come on certain people i'm seeing deliverance in families this is not just you you are standing for your loved ones i'm seeing mighty deliverance is happening in families and the lord is saying one more time we should shout that name jesus in the name of the lord jesus as we shout jesus i like you to shout all your heart at the count of three the moment you do that i see deliverance coming to families and what they could not do in many years will be done within one month what they could not do in many years will be done within one month in the name of jesus one two three right now deliverance 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 shakataba families i command it inside and outside inside and outside deliverance what could not be done in 10 years in 10 years it will be done in one month what could not be done in 10 years will be done in one month what could not be done in 10 years will be done in one month hallelujah say after me in the name of jesus say it in the name of jesus every door stopping me from entering the next level right now i command that door broken lift your voice and begin to pray pray yourself to the next dimension Doors are opening. Pray inside and outside. Doors are opening. Doors are opening. Doors are opening.
Alléluia. 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 Listen, many of you may not understand what is happening in the realm of the spirit, but you see, the presence of God is where change happens in the life of men. Just like this, you will walk out and you will see things happen in your life. Just like this. There are chains that tie men. There are chains that hold down destinies. There are chains. Please bring this lady for me. Yes, this lady. Just this very lady. Just bring her. I keep the chains falling. Hey, I keep the chains. 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 There is power in the name of Jesus. Deliverance is coming for you. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in, in the name of Jesus. Hey, to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Jimmy, the Lord is giving me a word. I saw an eagle flying and the eagle came and entered you. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's restoring to you the spirit of prophecy. That's what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. He's restoring to you. I saw an eagle fly and it entered you. And the Lord is saying, he's restoring the spirit of prophecy. 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 Hallelujah. I'm looking in the spirit and I'm seeing people carry load and God is saying I should bring down that load. Lift your hands. Lord, where are they carrying loads that do not belong to them? Right now, at the count of three, let that load come off you. Right now, one, two, three. Right now, right now, right now. Anyone carrying any load, kapra takata, shakata tata. Every load, every load, every load, every load, every load, every load that is not of God. Every load that is not of God. Every load that is not of God must leave you must leave you must leave you must leave you hallelujah hallelujah before we are going to be very fast hallelujah I was walking and the Lord said I should go back praise the Lord please don't mind me just allow me to do what the Lord is saying and the Lord is saying I should walk right here outside right and go outside please hear me and the lord is saying as i walk for every road that i pass if there is a spirit holding your destiny it must leave you please believe me shake karababa i lift my hands right now right now as i'm passing the anointing of the spirit is touching people destroying yokes destroying yokes destroying yokes right now Destroying yokes from my left and my right. Destroying yokes. Any spirit tying down any man's destiny. Right now, right now, right now. Right now, right now. Right now, right now. 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 Every spirit. Every spirit, every spirit, every spirit. Now listen to me. Those outside, don't be afraid it will not rain. But watch this. Lift your hands. I'm going to walk this way. 
and the power of the Holy Ghost you are enduring this rain as I walk through any spirit tying your life must give way right now are you ready right now right now right now right now right now I release everybody from bondage 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 right now I stretch my hands I stretch my hands I stretch my hands right now I stretch my hands I stand by an anointing as I pass your role any devil tying you we let you go right now as I pass your role as I pass as I pass your role as I pass your role as I pass your role now right for your limitation you are enduring the rain you cannot go back the same I came out to join you hallelujah please make sure you pray I'm moving around we are going to pray for you. Please lift your hands. Make sure you are praying. There's no spirit that will stand. Hallelujah. As many who can come in, don't worry. Just push them in. I know it will be a bit stuffy, but push as many people everywhere and let's pray we have to hurry up just push them as many there are some who may not be able to do much but then we are praying we are praying say after me in the name of Jesus say it again in the name of Jesus every power holding me say it again in the name of Jesus every power holding my breakthrough tonight your time is up go 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 lift your voice and pray pray every power every force hallelujah now hold on I know that there are so many people coming in just give them room to come in just make every adjustment not all may be able to come in but it's a sacrifice it's a sacrifice it's a sacrifice we want to pray for the sick now now please be careful so we don't have people marching on people hallelujah we are going to do two things at the same time all those who came trusting God for healing now is your time please walk with the protocol walk with the ushers I'm going to ask you to come out and stand here don't match the people in front while they are doing that ushers begin to pass your prayer request begin to pass your prayer request there are miracles in the name of Jesus there are breakthroughs in the name of Jesus there is healing in the name of Jesus to break every chain break every chain Break every chain. Power to break every chain. Break every chain. I sense a strong healing anointing. A strong healing anointing entering this building. Break every chain. Break every chain. 
break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Now we're going to minister to the sick. Please hear me. No matter what the situation is, as you stand right here, I want you to believe God for healing. You've heard the testimonies of people. You've seen the things that God is doing in this place. Don't make the place rowdy. Just be orderly as we pray for you. Just a touch and you return back. We may not have the time to take testimonies. Hallelujah. Please say to me, you will join me. Where's Pastor Jakes? I'm glad to have them around and they'll make this work easy. The anointed people, as we pray for you, I want you to believe God for healing. The moment you are prayed for, as you walk back to your seat, do what you couldn't do before. Don't just sit down and hope you are healed. The Bible says they came to hear and to be healed. They came to hear and to be healed. Everyone lift your hands in one minute and pray and say every sickness in my body is time for you to go. Every incurable disease. Go ahead and pray. Every incurable disease. You are living. Hallelujah. Worship team, you help us while we minister Pastor Jakes. Watch me please. We are going to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want you to believe in the God that heals. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Make sure you are praying in tongues. Don't just be whiling away time. Drop your prayer request and be praying. Pray in the Spirit. And say, Lord, you are going to visit me. To break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, this I consider these sessions to be the most powerful. I know that you have to be a man of the spirit to understand all these things, the word of knowledge, ministering to the sick is very important but sincerely there is only so much are we together there's only so much there are thousands of people here and there is only so much you can see this represents the prayer request of so many people and there are so many others um, online and this is when we get to give God chance to reveal himself as a God of wonders hallelujah our time is spent, but I want you to make sure that you participate. We're going to pray on this right now. And then afterwards, um, I'm going to prophesy over our lives. Then we'll take a few announcements and we'll be done. I want you to maximize the night so that you don't go back and return the same. Hallelujah. Before I pray, I, I want, if you can rise, please rise. Those on, under the anointing, that's all right. And then mothers with children, that's all right, but... The rest of us, please, let's rise and take this very seriously. We're going to be praying right now. When Pastor Jakes and Ejimi are done, they can come and join us. We'll pray. Pastor Godwin, where are you? Please, can you come and join us? Um, we're going to pray. I'd like you to stretch your hands here. And in one minute, pray like your life depends on it. And say the same way I have dropped this. That's how I've dropped every challenge in my life. I'd like you to pray. Please pray. Koinonia, open your mouth. Inside, outside, online. Please join us. We are going to lay our hands prophetically on these requests. As we lay our hands on them, we are releasing the power of God to every home, to every territory. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Make sure you pray from the depth of your heart. Father, we agree with you. We agree with you. All kinds of miracles 
impossible situations make sure you are praying there is a God that answers prayers let fire fall on this request to God Shakata prakata Pray, prophesy. We are speaking over this request. Wipe the tears of people, oh God. Visit individuals. Visit families. Strange miracles. Strange miracles. shall not arise again the second time. Allah, do taka boba baba shota inga dua ika tula katia mama makada dusa ika deda baba ika. It is done. It is done, says the Spirit of God. It is done. Oh, glory be to God. Go ahead and rejoice and give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 Please lift your hands and receive the prophecy. This is where God is going to be changing lives. Hallelujah. Your destiny can change overnight because one word was received. Prophecy does not only reveal, it creates. This is where everybody gets to participate in the service take it high guys inside outside this is where I want you to believe you will rise in his name I don't know you reign you will rise in your name, I don't know. You reign, you will rise in His name. weeks ago I had a very serious encounter with God and the Lord told me something he said I have put my word in your mouth as you speak it I will make it happen that's what the Lord told me please I want you to believe it oh blessed is she that believes don't sit down and doubt and waste your time there is a spiritual dimension to life it's not just I have taught you principles Believe me when I tell you there is a spiritual dimension. Gates and doors over the lives and the destinies of men. I pray. Every gate that must be opened right now. 
I speak to you Ephata be open now 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 that chain tying any man's destiny tying the speed of your progress you are moving but you're not making impact. Right now, I release upon you an auction for speed. An auction. Take it. An auction for speed. An auction for speed. The Bible says, and the hand of the Lord, please help them. The hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. He guarded his loins and ran on barefoot. He overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I don't know what you have done from January to now, but I prophesy from now till the end of June, do what you have not done in five years. Do what you have not done in five years. Do what you have not done in five years. Hallelujah. Jacob dug a well and they covered it. They dug another one. They covered it. They dug the third one and they left it and they called it Rehoboth. They said God has given us our space. Where you have been begging for relevance, it's like there is no place for you in life. It's like there is no place. I stand under this apostolic and prophetic mantle. Take your place in life. Take your place in destiny. Take your place in ministry. Take your place in destiny. Take your place in ministry. Ay, 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 ay. Whatever has covered your glory, whatever has covered your glory, I stand tonight. I invoke the powers of the heavens. And I command, let your glory be released now. Be released now. Be released now. Anyone here called jobless? Between now and the next two months, I don't care what is the reason, but I pray, as surely as the God of heaven lives, we give you a job here now. We give you a job here now. We give you a job here now. It says to appoint unto them that morning Zion. Listen, there are some of us, you are making progress, but no help in your life. You fight for everything by yourself. You pay for everything by yourself. When you are in trouble, there's nobody to speak for you at the gates. Where are your helpers? Who stopped them from entering your life? Who said it must be this hard? I go down on my knees. I call your helpers by prophecy in the name of Jesus. From the north to the south to the east to the west. From the north to the south to the east to the west. From the north to the south, to the east, to the west, receive of their ministry. Listen, let me tell you, there is nothing more tragic as having no helper. No man can stand alone. You need voices to speak to you at the gates of destiny. You need men to endorse you and say, help him. You can't have to explain yourself to everybody. Who is speaking for you? I pray again. Whoever must appear in your life from now till June. Business helpers. Financial helpers. Marital helpers. Career helpers. I call you forth. I call you forth. 
Hallelujah. Listen, lift your hands. There are some of you, your dreams and visions used to be opportunities for intense revelation where God will show you secrets. It made your life easy till something shot you from visions and dreams. I pray. Every dead dream life, every dead manifestation of visions, like a mantle, receive restoration now. Restoration of dreams, prophetic dreams, visions, prophetic vision. Hallelujah. Please stretch your hands towards me. Please stretch your hands towards me. The hands of a man represent your responsibility, represents your wisdom, represents your agency for bread. I pray for you. Whatever has mocked the creativity of your hands so that your potentials are underutilized. Isaiah 48 verse 17. I am the Lord that teacheth thy hands to profit. I pray the grace that makes your hand productive. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. The grace that makes your hand multiply. Take it now. Everything called barren in your destiny. Physical barrenness. Spiritual barrenness. Academic barrenness. Career barrenness. Right now. I cause the spirit of barrenness from his root and I command be fruitful be fruitful be fruitful hallelujah lift your hands in the next one minute I want us to pray because everyone will receive something listen Listen, what we're all receiving is an upgrade of grace. Listen, he said, Grace be multiplied, grace and peace be multiplied. The grace upon a man's life can multiply, should multiply, must multiply. There are three things that happen to you when God lifts you one, He multiplies your grace, two, He adds to your responsibility. Three, he increases your territory of influence both spiritually and physically I pray for you lift your hands some of us you have not backslidden but you have not risen beyond certain levels you have stayed there at a level everything that is alive grows please I want you to receive I told you this meeting will have impartations the impartation is not falling on the ground and rolling impartation is receiving something tangible in your spirit hallelujah Paul said I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift he said to the end that he be established I pray for you lift your hands every grace that is dormant in your life every grace that is useful but it has stayed at a level and is made no matter how you try to rise it stands there in the name of Jesus by the privilege of the apostolic office I pray for you may that grace be upgraded now receive it receive it take it an upgrade of favor an upgrade of wisdom an upgrade of power, fire, power, fire, fire, prayer, fire, word, fire, prayer, fire, word, fire, an upgrade of supernatural wisdom, an upgrade of access, 
access to men of influence I pray for you listen what your current level of grace could not bring you into I empower you to go back and conquer that realm oh let me repeat what I'm saying there are levels in life and there are graces that are like keys you can get to a level and be stuck there no matter what kind of deliverance you can stay there because graces are like flights they can take you beyond certain levels some of us just need a little upgrade to overcome the obstacles you have tried prayer has brought you so far I pray for you whatever dimension must be added so that you can fly like the eagle that you are receive that dimension now receive that dimension now receive that dimension now hallelujah the bible says and you shall be called with a new name which the mouth of the lord shall speak it says you shall be called hefziba and pula a well desired land i pray for you everything that makes people run away from you they plan to help you but when they come they change their mind they plan to bless you but when they see you they consider what they are about to sow there is a spirit that cut short breakthroughs i pray for you in the name of jesus i pray the blessing that was prophesied is said to jacob the smell of my son is like the field that the lord has blessed that aura that attracts favor receive it right now receive it right now whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise may that prayer be answered let me say it again whoever vowed and said it is through his dead body you will rise I said may that prayer be answered listen the Bible says in five things the Lord will deliver you he said yes six he will deliver you from the scourging tongues of men it was a revelation that was given Job that men stay and use their tongues to trap the destinies of men I pray for you whoever has used his tongue like a net to trap your life I release you right now I release you right now I release you right now hallelujah the kind of finances your hands has not touched I pray for you between now and the end of this month may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes anyone here marked for death that death is eyeing you waiting for the day you will get on the road waiting for the day a bike will come close to you to kill you and take your life I pray for you in the name of Jesus we forbid the earth from receiving your body we forbid the earth from receiving your body there are five elements I'm rounding up that are the conduits through which the supernatural finds expression on earth five elements all through scripture the supernatural cannot manifest on earth without the instrumentality of these five elements number one is light God is light the entrance of thy word give it light let there be light number two water the fish and the birds of the end Genesis came out of water water represents abundance number three fire hallelujah it's a mysterious instrument not threatened by any other element yet refines every other number four wind the mystery of sound the mystery that takes sounds and realities he said I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound that sound came back in Acts chapter 2 a sound hallelujah and the last element is the earth the prophet said oh earth hear you the word of the Lord 
He said, for from dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. Hear me? I want to pray just one deep mystery for you. The earth is a universal point of contact. Every man makes contact with it. For you to be alive, you must make contact with the earth. Your feet must touch the ground. Your helper's feet is touching this ground you are touching. No, 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 no. It's not amen. It's a mystery. The office where you are to be employed is on this ground. It's not in the air. Hear me, please. The bank that holds the favor you are looking for has contact with this earth. And the prophet said, O oh earth, you are a living thing. You are not just stones. Hallelujah. Are we together? Hmm. It says they will not be able to oppress you because you have made a covenant with the stones. I pray for you. Whoever wants to disfavor you, just like the stars fought for Deborah, may the earth fight for you. May the earth fight for you. Quarter to shame. May a mystery manifest that you don't understand to bail you out. Listen. When men say, let's see what will become of him. I pray a mystery. My goodness. Another way. May God bring another mystery. And deliver you. In the name of Jesus. The heat and the turmoil in Nigeria. We love our nation. We pray for them. And we pray sincerely out of a sense of nationhood. But I pray for you. The mystery of exemption that can exempt a man. It says for when men say there is a casting down. For you, you will say there is a lifting up. I prophesy a lifting up. Regardless of the recession, this is still your year of multiplied grace and growth. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give God thanks. Thank him sincerely. Lord, we thank you for your word. Listen, I want you to go back realizing what happened to you. Don't be like the man who looks at himself at the mirror and leaves and forgets. These prophecies have come upon you like a mantle. You enforce them in the place of prayer. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.